Don't Trust the Imposter. Written by Victorine E. Liskey. Narrated by Liz Crane. Chapter 1 Destiny turned her rearview mirror and checked her lipstick in the reflection before she got out of her convertible. It wasn't yet Halloween, but this morning it felt like Christmas with the cold temperature and early frost covering everything. She pulled her jacket tight around her as she walked toward the school, her heeled sandals crunching on the gravel. The wind whipped against her bare legs. Why hadn't she checked the weather report before choosing a short skirt? Stupid. This time of year, it could be in the 50s or in the 20s. She really should start paying more attention before getting dressed. A growling noise in the foliage caught her attention, and she crouched down to see a little Yorkie baring its teeth as a black-and-white kitten cowered against the school building. Destiny knew the dog. It belonged to Mrs. Benson down the street. Hey, Sophie, leave the kitten alone. Go back home. Sophie growled again, then barked. Mrs. Benson stepped out of her house and stood on her stoop. Sophie! She yelled. The dog's ears perked up, and she turned around and ran home. Destiny reached in and tried to pick up the little kitten, but it backed away from her hand. It's okay, little one. I won't hurt you. Are you cold? The poor thing shivered as another gust of freezing air blew. Destiny held out her hand. Come here, kitty. She waited for the kitten to move. It took a minute, but the kitten finally crept closer to her and sniffed her hand. She gently stroked the fur. It didn't have much meat on its bones. You poor thing. You look hungry. What are you doing? A low voice said behind her, startling her. She yelped and fell on her butt. The kitten spooked and scampered off in the other direction. Nice one. She turned to face the guy who owned that voice. Eli. I'm not doing anything, she said as he reached a hand down. She grabbed it so he could lift her off the sidewalk. Eli pulled and she bumped into the front of him. He grinned at her and her insides tingled. Why did she always react to him like that? He was cute, but she had a boyfriend. She couldn't crush on another guy. He leaned in close to her. Need any help? She shoved him away. No. He laughed and took a step back. I just thought it looked like you were having fun, digging around in the bushes. He spread his hands out. He was an impossible flirt, what was she supposed to say to that? She just made a face and started toward the school doors. He fell into step beside her. You cold? You look a little... blue. Embarrassment once again heated her ears and she yanked on her miniskirt. I know, I didn't check the weather before choosing my outfit. Eli's gaze traveled over her as they entered the school building. It looks good on you. Pleasure pooled in her stomach. How did he do that? Make her roll her eyes one second, then feel all tingly inside the next. And why couldn't Jack ever make her feel like that? She grinned and flipped her hair over her shoulder, a move she'd learned from the popular girls. Thanks. Amanda walked up to them, her book bag slung over her shoulder. Hey, Des. She gave Eli a sideways glance. Eli. Hey. Amanda looked down at Destiny's sandals. Cute shoes. Destiny smiled and turned her ankle to show them off. Thanks. They're Jimmy shoes. Got them half price. Amanda made a face. How much were they? Two hundred. Eli made a noise and Amanda blew out a breath. By the look on Amanda's face, Destiny was going to get a lecture. She loved Amanda, but sometimes she was a little over the top. 
Do you know how many endangered seals you could save by donating that kind of money? I did donate it to the Destiny Needs to Look Good Fund. She gave Amanda a silly grin. Then she tacked on to the end a quick, just kidding. Amanda rolled her eyes, but Destiny knew it was good-natured. Amanda was her best friend, always rooting for the underdog, which Destiny liked. It showed how tender-hearted Amanda was. And when it came down to it, Destiny supported her friend. When Amanda organized something, Destiny was there with her. She painted signs and showed up to the Clean the Lake march, even though it was 15 degrees outside that day. And she walked right alongside Amanda, waving her sign and letting people know it wasn't acceptable to toss trash in the lake. And when Amanda got all crazy about raising money for the Gorilla Foundation, Destiny donated $300. She wanted to save the animals as much as Amanda. She loved animals. Amanda swiveled around. Don't look now, but the brain-dead troop is coming our way. Destiny elbowed Amanda. Don't call them that, she hissed. You know I'd burn down a small forest to get in with that crowd. Amanda gasped. Blaspheme! Who? Eli said. The popular girls, Amanda said. Shut up! Here they come! Destiny smiled as Nikki and her clan approached them. Nikki was the head of the pop girls, as everyone liked to call them behind their backs. They were even more popular than the cheerleading crew. Nikki couldn't be bothered with getting excited about football. She was too cool for that. Destiny glanced at the group. Nikki was leading them, as usual. Kara and Charlie flanked her, their snooty faces firmly in place. Nikki glanced at Destiny and gave her a quick once-over. Nice shoes, she said. Kara and Charlie immediately nodded. Thanks! Destiny's heart pounded. The leader of the pop girls had noticed her. Holy freaking cow. This was amazing! She turned to say something to Nikki, but her sandal strap caught on her other shoe, and before she could catch herself, she fell on her butt for the second time that morning. Eli reached down and pulled her up in one swift move, and once again she found herself in his arms. His eyebrows came together in concern. Are you okay? Laughter rang through the hallway, but Destiny didn't want to look to see if it was coming from the pop girls. She wanted to run away and never show her face in Rockford again. Heat burned her face. I'm fine, she mumbled and pushed past Eli, stumbling down the hallway in a useless attempt to flee her humiliation. Slow down or you'll fall again, Amanda said after they'd turned a corner and the students thinned out. Sorry. Destiny forced her steps to slow. Then she buried her face in her hands. The stale stench of failure wafted around her. How could she show her face again to the pop girls? They would make fun of her for eternity. I can't believe I did that, she said, groaning. Eli put his arm around her. He smelled like that popular cologne that all teen guys wore. Don't worry, no one noticed. No one noticed, right. She could only wish for that in her dreams. I heard the laughter. Losers laugh. You're above that. Just ignore them. If they laughed at you, they don't deserve your friendship anyway. His kind words warmed her heart. Eli could be a real nice guy when he wanted to be. He's right, they are losers. Amanda pushed her glasses up with one finger. They don't matter. She gave her a hug. I'll see you at lunch. Amanda took off down the hallway. Even though Amanda was quirky, she was a good friend. Destiny took in a deep breath. Maybe they were right. Maybe the pop girls weren't important. 
Maybe she would be better off ignoring them. Was it horrible that deep in her heart, she hoped Nikki would like her? That she would be invited to sit at the cool kids' table and be counted as one of them? Or maybe she was delusional? Eli squeezed her shoulder. Don't worry. I can make you forget all about them. He wiggled his eyebrows at her. She squirmed away from him. You can't help how you are, can you? He raised one eyebrow. And how's that? A hopeless flirt? Destiny was half joking, half serious, but Eli seemed to take it as a challenge. He took two steps toward her, and she backed up until she was against the lockers. Her body broke out in tingles. Stupid. She stared at him. Really? His gaze traveled over her, like he was drinking her in. Something tells me you kind of like that. Crud. How could he tell? She did everything in her power to remind herself she had a boyfriend and wasn't going to encourage this kind of behavior from Eli. He leaned in until he was so close, she was enveloped by him. She swallowed, her heart suddenly pumping like crazy. No. I don't believe you. He ran a finger down the side of her jaw, and shivers exploded over her skin. She scolded her body for reacting that way and shoved his chest. Get away! You know I have a boyfriend. You mean the guy who is never around? Because I can honestly say I'd be a much better boyfriend to you than him. That stung, and Destiny sobered. He'd hit a nerve. Jack wasn't paying much attention to her lately. He had things going on, and she understood that. How could she fault him for all the activities he was involved in? And she tried to be a supportive girlfriend, but lately he wasn't very attentive, even when he was with her. She straightened. Too bad we'll never get to find out. She turned and left him standing there. A tiny bit of guilt wormed its way through her chest, but she swallowed it down. Eli got what he deserved. He was coming on to her and even though he knew good and well she was dating another guy. Who does that? And yes, Eli was cute. And she did like the way his eyes crinkled at the edges when he smiled. But his smiles were always fake. He came on too strong with her. She appreciated the attention, but it felt so surface. Like he was pretending to like her. Who cared if he was cute, if he was also shallow? She wanted someone who liked her for who she was. Someone like Jack. At least, how Jack had been when they first started dating. Back when Jessica had been into him. Guilt surfaced from that as well. She hadn't meant to steal Jack from Jessica. He'd just been so charming, so attentive to her. She didn't realize at the time that Jessica and he were still going out, and then he dumped Jessica and it was too late to do anything about it. But now, Jack was aloof. So distant. She needed to figure out what was going on with him so she could heal their relationship. Then she could forget about Eli, and the way his touch made her stomach feel like it was full of fizzy bubbles. Chapter 2 Eli stared at Destiny's retreating back. Stupid! He came on too strong. What was he thinking? He needed to cool it. Why did he get all flustered and act like an idiot when she was around? He couldn't seem to get himself under control. She was too pretty, and he got too nervous around her. He turned to head toward his locker. Maybe tomorrow he could find a way to spend more time with her. Talk with her for real or something. He made it his goal to get to know her better. Ask her some questions. 
After he got his locker open, Jack came up to him and slapped him on his shoulder. Dude, how's it going? It's going good. How good? I need Destiny to dump me soon or I'll be out $200. My new girl is getting on my back. If I'm not free soon, she's going to tell Gabe about us and I'll lose the bet. I don't have 200 to give him. You gotta help me out here. Eli kind of wanted to punch the guy. He was a real jerk. From what he could tell, Gabe wasn't that much better. But Jack was the one who bet Gabe he wouldn't find another girl, then turned around and did just that. She likes me. She's just super loyal. To you. Eli frowned, although I'm not sure why. Jack laughed. You just keep flirting with her, buddy. I think you can do it. You just need to try harder. Destiny's the kind of girl who gets easily distracted, if you know what I mean. Now he really wanted to sock the guy in the throat. Before Eli could say anything, the bell rang, and Jack shoved his shoulder. You better hurry. If I lose this bet, we're both out a hundred bucks. You should join the Halloween dance committee. We meet in the library after school. Jack walked backwards. It would give you a chance to work on your charm. I'll even help you out. He clicked his tongue as he pointed at him and disappeared down the hallway. Great. Eli sighed and slammed his locker closed. Now he had to join a committee? Why did he even agree to do this for Jack? Oh, right. He needed the money. If he didn't scrape enough together for his car insurance, he'd be out one sweet ride. And he'd already applied to a ton of places around town. No one seemed to be hiring. Even though Eli disliked Jack immensely, he had to admit that a hundred bucks would help him out. And really, charming a girl like Destiny was fun. She was a cool person, and it was okay that he was trying to break her up because Destiny didn't deserve to be with a slime like Jack anyway. At the end of the school day, Eli gathered up his books and stuffed them in his locker. A note fell out and fluttered to the floor. He bent and picked it up. Don't forget to go to the library after school. Jack. Eli crumpled up the note and tossed it in the trash on the way to the library. He swallowed down his irritation. It wasn't hard to find Destiny. As he walked through the library, he heard her laughter coming from the room in the back. He entered and saw her sitting cross-legged by a large poster with black and gold lettering. Amanda was there, too. Jack and one other guy he'd never seen before were sitting at a table. He walked into the room and smiled at Destiny. Hey, I heard this is where the Halloween dance committee is meeting. I'd like to join. Amanda looked up at him and nodded. Sure, come on in. You can help the guys with the paper spiders. She motioned to the table. That's Cole and Jack. Eli waved and crossed the room, joining the guys. Scraps of paper lay scattered across the tabletop along with some black styrofoam balls. Cole looked at Eli and motioned. Grab some scraps. I'll show you what we're doing. Cole was a big guy. He looked like a football player, although Eli wasn't sure why he'd be stuck in the library gluing spiders together instead of out on the field with the team. Eli grabbed a bottle of glue and a styrofoam ball. You doing this as a punishment or something? Cole looked at him funny. What? No. I just thought maybe you'd rather be with your team. Amanda started laughing so hard, she snorted. Cole frowned. What's so funny? He thinks you're on the football team, Amanda said, laughing through her words. He's not? Eli suddenly felt stupid. Cole chuckled. Nah, I couldn't catch a football if my life depended on it. I just like to work out. Amanda giggled as she dipped a paintbrush into a jar of paint. Cole's not into sports ball. 
He's into spreadsheets. Hey, Cole said, clearly affronted. Don't make it sound like I'm a wuss. I like sports just fine. I simply have business aspirations. That's all. Amanda adjusted her glasses. He's going to be the world's youngest billionaire. She made a face like she found that distasteful. Eli shrugged. What's wrong with making money? Destiny scoffed. Oh, don't get her started on the evils of the world, Eli. You don't know Amanda like we do. We'll be stuck here all night listening to how corporations ruin everything. Let's talk about something safer, like the dance. Oh, please, Amanda said, putting her fists on her hips. It's our duty to better the world, not destroy it. Eli could see a lecture coming, so he quickly interrupted. When is the dance? Halloween night. Destiny shifted so she could get better access to the middle of her poster. We need to hang these tomorrow to help spread the word. Jack just sat there, acting uninterested in the conversation. Eli watched him as he glued spiders, his muscles tense. Isn't it late to be hanging posters? Halloween is just a week away. Eli hadn't meant for it to sound so rude, and he quickly tacked on, I mean, it's probably fine. No, you're right, Amanda said, her eyebrows pulling down. She brushed her long brown hair over her shoulder. We're late getting them done. But, Destiny said as she dipped her paintbrush into the water jar, we have them almost done, and we're hanging them before we leave so we can be sure to get a good turnout. Besides, we have this dance every Halloween, so people are used to it. People are already talking about it. Jack's gaze settled on the jar of water Destiny was cleaning her brush in. Eli leaned forward to pick up another scrap of paper and the bottle of glue. Jack was making him uncomfortable. Then I think you're okay. Amanda shifted to another poster and started adding gold accents to it. We should give Eli some assignments for the dance. We need another cleanup person. Great. He didn't want to be stuck cleaning up after a dance if Destiny wasn't going to be there. That was the whole reason he was doing this. He shifted in his chair. I'll help with whatever Destiny is doing. Amanda looked between Jack and Eli, her eyebrows pulled down. You can help Cole and Destiny take down streamers. Jack suddenly stood up and walked toward Destiny. Hey, babe, I've got to go. His shoe kicked the dirty water jar and it spilled over the poster. Oh, no! Destiny jumped up so fast she was a blur. My poster! Jack leaned down to grab the water jar, but it was too late. Her poster was ruined buckling where the rivets of water had run. I'm sorry, did I do that? Destiny blinked back tears, and Eli waited for her to wail, but she held it together. She rushed to Jack and threw her arms around him. I know you didn't mean to. You're right, it was an accident, and I'm so sorry I can't help you remake the poster, but I've got a thing I have to get to. He turned to Eli. Can you run to the store with Destiny and get a new poster board and help her remake this? Eli stood. Sure, I can help. Jack squeezed Destiny to him. There, Eli will help you remake it. Don't worry, it will be fine. Destiny nodded, still looking like she could burst into tears at any second. But the library's closing soon. Go with Eli. He'll help you get more supplies. Then he can help you finish the poster at your house. Jack smiled. It shouldn't take long to redo it. But we spent all our budget, Amanda said. Jack dug into his pocket and gave Destiny a $20 bill. This should cover it. He kissed her cheek and headed toward the door. Call me later, babe. I will, Destiny said.
staring at the space he'd been in a second before. She folded the $20 bill and placed it into her purse. I guess we should go, she said, turning to Eli. He felt sorry for her, and even worse that Jack had done it on purpose so he would spend time with her. What a jerk! Didn't he care at all how Destiny would feel? It just gave Eli more motivation to get Destiny away from that creep. He stepped over the ruined poster and grabbed her hand. Come on, we can take my car. She walked out of the room with him, but took her hand back as soon as they stepped into the hallway. She still seemed upset as they left the building and took the cement steps down to the sidewalk. You okay? he asked. Destiny wiped at the corner of her eye. Yeah, it's just a stupid poster. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. You worked hard on it. He took a sideways glance at her. I'm sorry it got ruined. She gave him a small smile. Thanks. He stopped at his silver Porsche and opened the passenger side door for Destiny. Her mouth dropped. This is your car? Yeah, my dad bought it for me when I turned 16. She slid into the seat. Holy cow! What does your dad do? He's an ER doctor. And he chose to move here? From Santa Cruz? Eli didn't want to talk about his father, or what led to him and his mother moving. He shook his head. Nope. He's back in Cali. Just me and Mom moved. Oh. He closed her car door and walked around the front, cursing himself for making the mood feel depressing. Why did he have to talk about his father? He needed to get on a lighter subject. He climbed into the driver's seat and started the engine. Where should we go to get poster board? Hobby Lobby. I don't know where that is. You drive. I'll give you directions. Oh, scary. We could end up anywhere. He turned on his sexy smile. Are you trying to take me to a makeout point? Destiny scoffed. It's like 15 degrees out today. Not a great day to make out in your car. She rubbed her arms. He turned up the heat. You're probably right. Then he gave her a coy smile. But if you ever want to, let me know. I'm willing to sacrifice for you. She rolled her eyes. Why are you always doing that? Doing what? Putting up a front, not being yourself. Ouch, girl. You think I'm acting? Because I'm serious. I'd totally make out with you. Anytime. He cringed. There he went again. Sheesh, he needed to chill. How could he ever win her over if he got all flustered when he was around her? He had to find a way to stop it. Chapter 3 Destiny could feel the smarm coming off him in waves. Eli seemed like a nice guy, so she didn't understand why he had to put on that fake attitude. You are such a fake. I don't even think you know you're doing it. Maybe you've worn a mask for so long you don't know how to take it off. Eli didn't respond. He just kept driving. She shook her head. It wouldn't do any good to talk to Eli about it. He was apparently unaware how surface he was being. And that was fine. He could go on being surface because she didn't care at all about Eli. She was with Jack. That's who she liked. She huffed. Go up another block and then turn left. He was silent for a few moments as he followed her directions and then turned into the Hobby Lobby parking lot. He found a spot to park and cut the engine, but he didn't get out of his car. He leaned his arm on his steering wheel and turned toward her. I'm not fake. The sincerity in his eyes surprised her, and she blinked at him. She was taken aback. Well, you were being fake before, she mumbled. 
then I apologize because I don't want you to think I'm like that. Her heart thumped, and she suddenly wanted to get out of the car. Okay, she said, grabbing the door handle. Let's go in. He hurried to open the door for her as they went into the store, which was actually kind of sweet of him. What aisle is the poster board in? Follow me, I'll show you. Destiny took the lead. Why don't you ask me questions? Get to know me. Then maybe you would like me more. I like you just fine, she said. What she didn't tell him was she maybe liked him more than she should. He was good-looking, and she suddenly was having a reaction to being near him. Feelings, things even Jack didn't evoke in her. No, you don't. I can tell. Eli gave her a one-eyebrow-raised look. I just don't like the fakey stuff. He let out a frustrated breath. Then ask me some questions. I swear I'll answer them truthfully. No fake at all. He held up his hands in a surrender motion. Something about the way he stood there made him seem vulnerable. Like he really was trying to be truthful with her. She appreciated it. All right, let me think. They walked in silence for a moment while she tried to come up with something she could ask him. What's your favorite thing to do? Surfing. But you knew that already. I told you when we first met. Plus... He looked down at his I Love Surfing t-shirt, and she felt her cheeks heat with embarrassment. Okay, okay, that was a stupid one. Let me think of a better one. She turned down the aisle, but slowed as she got to the poster board. She wanted to ask him something that wasn't surface. Something that would reveal a part of him he wasn't showing her. Republican or Democrat? He smiled at that question, and for the first time, she felt it was genuine. Libertarian. Seriously? He leaned against a support beam and folded his arms. I told you I would answer honestly. Okay, that's interesting then. She liked that he didn't say whatever was popular. It meant he'd looked into it and really thought about it. That was cool. She'd have to go home and read more about libertarians. Ask another. What's the last book you read? Animal Farm. For school? He chuckled. No, I just wanted to know what it was about. Huh, she'd never read it. What was it about? She pulled the correct size of poster board out of the holder. On the surface, talking animals. Under the surface, it was about Russian politics. Maybe I'll read it too. He raised his eyebrows. I'd be interested to hear what you think. Then I'll read it and tell you. She motioned to another part of the store. I think we need more black and gold paint, too. She turned the corner, and he followed her. When will you read it? What? She looked up at him. He smiled again, and she marveled how good it looked on him when it wasn't his smarmy fake one. This one made his eyes sparkle, like he was amused at her. Animal Farm. Is it long? Very short. Then I'll read it this weekend. She grabbed a bottle of black and a bottle of gold paint. Okay, call me after you do. He pulled out his phone. What's your number? I'll text you so you have mine. It felt a little weird giving Eli her number, but it wasn't like she was doing anything wrong. She wasn't coming on to him or anything. All they were going to do was talk about a book. That wasn't bad, was it? She rattled it off, pushing aside the weird, guilty feeling. She was not cheating on Jack. He was the one that told them to go shopping, after all. It seemed like he didn't mind them spending time together. She liked that Jack wasn't threatened. He fiddled with his phone, and a chime came through on hers. He looked at her. Anything else you want to ask? Do you have a pet? 
His smile faded. I did. The worst thing shot through Destiny's mind and she stopped cold. Oh no, did your pet die? He shook his head. No, they don't allow dogs in the apartment my mom and I moved into, so he couldn't come with me. You had to give up your dog when you moved here? Man, she felt awful for asking now. That's so sad. Yeah. Did you give him to a good home? Can you visit? Eli stiffened, and an invisible wall came down between them. She could see the way his eyes withdrew. He's with my father. Oh, that wasn't good. There was something bad there, something he wasn't telling her. She put her hand gently on his arm. Your parents are divorced? Yeah. Is that why you moved here? Yeah. He took the paint and the poster board from her and motioned. Are we done here? Destiny regretted asking. He obviously didn't want to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm not upset. He said it as he walked down the aisle toward the registers. His shoulders were tense, his movements quick. Yeah, right. You are too. He slowed. No, it's just hard for me to talk about. Maybe you should ask about something else. At least he was being honest. She couldn't fault him for that. Okay, I'll think of another question. He turned to her, his eyes sobering. One more, then it's my turn. Why did those words seem to affect her? Fair enough. She joined him in line, behind a woman with a cart piled high with discounted fall decorations. Destiny pressed her lips together, trying to think of a good question. Something that would tell her more about Eli. She suddenly wanted to know more about him, for some weird reason. What's your favorite movie? Inception. What's that? Eli's eyes grew big. Come on. You've heard of Inception, haven't you? Leonardo DiCaprio, only the greatest movie since The Fugitive. Destiny shifted her weight. I've seen The Fugitive. Well, Inception is better. You're seriously telling me you've never seen it? Nope. Eli raised his eyebrows. That's it, then. You have to come over and watch it. I can't live another minute with you never having seen the movie. Destiny laughed at his drama. We have to remake the poster that got ruined. We can make it in my living room while we watch the movie. Eli took a step forward as the woman with the fall decorations got done paying for her things. Come on. You like edge-of-your-seat movies, right? Yes, I guess so. She preferred romance, but she didn't mind suspense. What she hated were the movies with all the action. The ones that had weak stories. They were just popular for the car chases and explosions. Then you'll love this one. He lifted the poster board onto the counter and placed the paint on top. Say you'll come watch it with me. Why did his large brown eyes looking at her make her stomach feel all strange? She felt put on the spot. How could she say no? They needed to finish the poster, and he seemed excited to show her the movie. All right. He grinned and shot his fist into the air. Yes! She quickly inserted, but we're only watching the movie and working on the poster. Nothing else? He squinted at her. Of course. You have a boyfriend. What are you thinking? But then he winked at her, and she blew out a frustrated breath. Eli, I'm serious. Stop coming on to me. I can't be around you if you're always doing that. He chuckled, but he held his hands up and shrugged. Okay, okay, I'll behave. I promise. She turned to the woman behind the register and realized she'd already rung in their items and was waiting for Destiny to give her the money. Destiny flushed and dug out the $20 bill from her purse and handed it to the woman. Sorry. 
Eli slung his arm around her shoulders. You're going to love this movie. His touch made her feel a weird sensation in her chest. Kind of like she was hooked up to electrical nodes or something. She ignored it, mostly because she didn't want to acknowledge it. I'm looking forward to it. And she was surprised to realize she was. Chapter 4 Eli pulled into his apartment parking lot and cut his engine. Destiny had followed him in her car. She got out, and he led her up to the second floor where he pulled out his key and unlocked the door marked 28D. He walked in and set the poster on the couch. He motioned to the small living room. This is it? Want a Coke or something? She nodded and sat cross-legged on the floor. He went into the kitchen and pulled open the fridge. It was strange living in such a small space after growing up in a 5,000-square-foot home in California. They'd had a pool house larger than this. He pulled out a soda and returned to the living room. Destiny held the two bottles of paint. Do you have a paintbrush? Because I forgot we needed one. Uh, yeah, let me go look. I think my mom has some craft supplies in her closet. Eli went into his mother's bedroom. He pulled out the plastic container she stored her paints in and rummaged through it. In the bottom sat a couple of paintbrushes. He also grabbed the world's best mom mug he'd given his mother when he was five from the kitchen and filled it with water. He loved that she kept that mug, even though it was so cheesy. He handed it to Destiny. Here, this should work, right? Yes. She pointed to the poster. I outlined the words in pencil while you were in the other room, so all we have to do is fill it in with black paint, then accent in the gold. Easy. He started up the movie. At first, Destiny painted while she watched. But soon she got too into the movie to look down at the poster. He enjoyed watching her as she gripped her paintbrush tight when the scenes got intense. He finished painting the sign as the end of the movie unfolded. Destiny let out a breath when the credits started rolling. Sheesh, I feel like I need to watch that again to understand half of what I saw. I know, right? So, is he still in the dream world, then? See, that's what I think. But my best friend in Cali thinks he made it out. The best part of the movie is it's not really clear how it ends. You have to speculate. Destiny looked down at the poster and gasped. Oh, you finished it! I didn't even notice. Eli chuckled. I don't mind. That movie is engrossing. She whacked him on the arm. Yeah, way to pick a movie that you have to pay attention to while we're supposed to be finishing up the poster. I finished. He gathered up the paintbrushes and took them into the kitchen to rinse them in the sink. She smiled at him and picked up the mug with dirty water. Thanks. She brought it into the kitchen and poured the water down the sink. He stood next to her, his pulse quickening. She smelled like vanilla. He leaned closer to her. I'm glad you enjoyed the movie. She stared at him, her blue eyes mesmerizing him. He could easily forget himself and kiss her, but he knew that would make her angry because she was still into Jack. Frustration welled in him. Why did she like Jack anyway? He was selfish, and he wasn't attentive to her. He didn't even like her anymore. Jack should just tell her the truth. It wasn't fair to her for him to string her along like that. Destiny licked her lips and looked down at the linoleum. She still gripped the mug that sported World's Greatest Mom on it. I appreciate the help tonight. No problem. She met his gaze, and the bottom dropped out of his stomach. He took a step closer to her. Now they were almost touching. He wanted to reach out, take a hold of her hand, 
But he didn't, despite his agreement with Jack. He didn't want to make Destiny mad at him anymore. I should probably go, she said. He stepped back and mentally shook his head to clear it. Right. I'll hang the poster in the cafeteria tomorrow, before school starts. Eli nodded and took a step toward the door. Yeah, that would be good. She turned and he stopped her. Wait. What? I never got my turn. Something inside him screamed at him to stop, but he couldn't. He wanted a little more time with her. She pressed her lips together. He wasn't sure if she was suppressing a smile or refreshing her lipstick. Okay, go. Democrat or Republican? She narrowed her eyes, but not in a malicious way. It was more playful. Isn't that cheating? How? You stole my question. He couldn't help himself. He took a step toward her. She had the most beautiful blue eyes. How is that cheating? I want to know the answer. Don't you have to come up with your own questions? Are you the question police? Just answer it. He leaned in. She backed up against the door, then swallowed. I haven't decided yet. There, you happy? He smiled and placed his arm on the door above her. Fair enough. Is that all? Nope. I didn't think so. He liked this girl. She was funny. What was the last book you read? You are such a question stealer, you cheat. I think we already determined I'm not cheating. She blew out a breath, and it made him focus on her lips. Her very red, very soft-looking lips. The Lightning Thief. Percy Jackson? It was good. And if you tell anyone I read middle-grade fantasy novels, I'll kick you in the- Hold up, he said, chuckling and holding out his hands. Harry Potter was a middle-grade fantasy series, and the whole world read that. I love Percy Jackson. I won't make fun of you. Good, because I'm kind of sensitive about it. You mean insecure? Her mouth popped open, once again drawing his attention to her lips. I am not. Okay, third question. Can you guess what it is? My favorite movie? He nodded. You guessed. She blushed. Pass. Oh, come on. Tell me. She looked to the floor, her lashes brushing against her cheeks. No, I don't want to. That made him want to know even more. I'll give you one free question. Anything you want to know, I'll tell you the truth. Then you tell me. She shook her head. Pass. He wanted to get her to tell him, but she obviously was uncomfortable, so he let it slide. All right, you can pass on that one. But I get two more then, okay? She seemed relieved. Okay. Do you have any pets? A cat named Fluffy. He grinned at that one. Will you come over tomorrow? After school? Why? He held in the real answer. The one that told her he wanted to spend time with her. That he liked her. Instead, he said, So we can work on more Halloween decorations. We can do that at school. All the supplies are there. She turned and grabbed the door handle. Wait, I'll tell you the real reason. He frantically searched for something to say. She looked at him over her shoulder. What? I don't know how to dance. Will you teach me? She scoffed and shook her head. Get your mom, too. She smirked as she grabbed her poster, opened the door, then shut it behind her. Nice try, though, she called from the hallway. Great. He leaned up against the door, feeling like a fool. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Real smooth there. 
He went into the living room and turned off the television. If Destiny didn't think he was a desperate loser before, she definitely thought he was one now. Chapter 5 Destiny walked to her car, her heart aching like she'd run a marathon. Why did Eli affect her so much? He was cute, and he smelled extremely good, but that was only his cologne. Other guys wore the same. Why did it smell so much better on him? Her fingers couldn't seem to work as she tried to shove her key into the car door. What was wrong with her? The last time she felt this way was when she'd first met Jack. He'd shown interest in her, and she'd gotten all tongue-tied. But this was worse. She could hardly think around Eli. Stupid. She had to pull herself together. She had a test tomorrow in chemistry and had to study tonight. She couldn't spend the evening thinking about Eli, of all people. She was already struggling in that class. She drove home, groaning when she saw her older sister's car parked in the driveway. What was she doing home from school? It wasn't like she lived far away, just in Green Bay at a community college. But still, Destiny liked having more privacy with her sister out of the house. She hopped out of her car and pressed the key fob to lock her doors. She ran up to her room and closed the door. Fluffy was curled up in her usual spot on Destiny's bed. She sat next to her cat as a knock came on her door. Destiny blew out a breath. Her sister had probably been waiting to hear her come home. Come in. Olivia entered. She wore a pair of skinny jeans that showed off her figure and a cute t-shirt that sported her college's logo. Thank goodness you're home. I need to talk to you. No greeting, no asking how her day had gone. That wasn't her sister. Olivia was all about her own drama. Destiny picked up her cat and scooted until her back hit the headboard. What are you doing here? Don't you have school? Olivia joined her on the bed. The difference between them was striking. Olivia had dark hair and a darker complexion. She took after their father while Destiny looked more like their mother, with fair skin and blonde hair. Long weekend. I'm here until Sunday, but that's not important. I'm quitting school. Destiny blinked. Wait, what? You can't quit school. Mom and Dad would kill you. I know. Olivia put her hands over her face and moaned. I'm going to be in so much trouble. Olivia was always in trouble. Like the time she and her friends took off on a trip to Las Vegas and ran out of gas in the middle of Nebraska. Or the time she decided to run away from home and got as far as the bus station before realizing she didn't have enough money to actually go anywhere and ended up calling mom to come get her. Olivia was beautiful, but she didn't always think things through. What's going on? Destiny asked. Olivia let out a breath and moved her hands around, centering her chi or something. She was into reading auras and junk like that. I started up a business. That was the last thing Destiny expected to hear, and she about choked on her spit. You did what? A few months ago, I was shopping with my roommate. Kim is sweet, but she has no fashion sense at all. So, I helped her buy a few outfits. I'm lost. That's because you keep interrupting. Olivia shot her a pointed look. Anyway, I put together some amazing outfits for her, and she was so excited they made her look good, she gave me a hundred bucks. Destiny was starting to see where this was going. Then she told Stacy what I did, and Stacy had me shop for her as well. Olivia rubbed her painted fingernail. I didn't mean to start a business, but word spread. My boyfriend created a website for me, and now I have clients hiring me. Can you believe it? 
people I don't know paying me to shop for them. Wait a minute. Destiny held up her hand. You have a boyfriend and you didn't tell me? Olivia's cheeks turned pink. Never mind that part. Never mind that part? What do you mean that's the most important part? Who is he? Do I know him? She shook her head. You don't know him. He goes to my school. What's his name? Jared. Destiny couldn't believe her sister had a boyfriend and this was the first she'd heard of it. How long have you been dating? Not long. A few months. She motioned with her hand. But that's not the important part. Des, I have clients. Real people paying me money to shop for them. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm getting paid to do my favorite thing in the world. She flapped her hands like she thought she could fly around the room if she got fast enough. Destiny didn't know what to say. Her sister had always been great at pairing up clothes to make cool outfits. And she was right. Shopping was her favorite thing in the world. That's amazing. I know, right? I think I have a shot at making this work. She grabbed Destiny's hands. I could be a professional shopper. Oh, no. This wasn't good. Olivia tended to jump into things and then regret them later. What was she getting herself into now? What about your accounting degree? Olivia's shoulders slumped. Accounting is what Dad wanted me to go into, and it's as boring as paint. That wasn't the right saying, but Destiny left it alone. Dad won't be happy if you quit school. I know. Olivia moaned again and made a face that looked like she was constipated. But I can't do both, and my shopping business is growing. Olivia bit her lip. Someone from Alaska just hired me. Destiny didn't want to be a Debbie Downer, but she also wanted to force Olivia to see this realistically. Just one? Olivia huffed. Just one from Alaska? But they don't know me, and they hired me. This is huge, Des. How many other clients have you had? Olivia made a show of counting on her fingers for a moment. Then she put her hands in her lap. Six. But every business starts off slow, and my website is fantastic. Wait until you see it. Six clients? How could Olivia think that quitting school now was a good idea? The bed shifted as Olivia jumped up. Destiny's phone sliding on the bedspread. I knew you wouldn't understand. I don't know why I tried. This is big, but all people are focusing on is that number. She looked like she was going to cry. Hey, I'm trying to be helpful. This is what mom and dad are going to say. You have to think of a better argument for quitting school. She rolled her eyes, but sat back down. You're right. Fluffy must have gotten tired of being petted because she stretched and climbed out of Destiny's lap, then jumped to the floor. Why don't you stay in school for a while, just until your business takes off more? You could do both. Olivia put her face in her hands. I already quit. You did not! Olivia dramatically flopped backwards on the bed and moaned. I did. Then you have to tell them right away. Waiting isn't going to make it any better. Destiny's phone chimed, signaling a text message had come through. Before Destiny could grab it, Olivia picked up the phone. Hey! Destiny called out as she tried to snatch it back, but Olivia pulled it away, holding it out of reach. Olivia looked at the screen. Someone desperately wants to know what your favorite movie is. Destiny's cheeks heated. Give me that! Olivia shrugged and tossed it at her. Who is it? No one. No one? Really? Now I know you're hiding something. Who is it? Did you break up with Jack? Destiny tried to play it off as unimportant, even though she could tell her face was red. No, it's just a guy at school. A 
a friend. You do have those in college, don't you? Funny. Olivia brushed her hair behind her ear and squinted at her. If he's nobody, then why are you so flustered? I'm not. You are. Her eyes grew wide. Are you cheating on Jack? Destiny gasped and whacked her sister on the leg. No, why would you even think something like that? Well, you did steal Jessica's boyfriend. Ouch, that hurt. And brought up all the guilt, too. I didn't know they were still dating. And I feel bad about that whole thing, but Jessica and I have resolved it. That's good. And I'm totally nowhere near cheating. I can have a guy friend and not cheat on my boyfriend. Olivia dismissed the conversation with a hand wave. What's up with your favorite movie? I wouldn't tell him. Fluffy stopped licking herself to meow. It was the I'm hungry kind of pleading she did when she wanted a treat. Destiny stood and got out the treat bag she kept hidden in her nightstand. It's embarrassing. What is it? You probably don't know it. I'd know it if you would just tell me, Olivia huffed. She poured out a small pile of treats and Fluffy attacked them. It's a sappy Hallmark romance. Olivia gave her an eye roll. So what? Why wouldn't you just tell him? It's not like it really matters. True. But she also cared very much what Eli thought of her. The realization made her uncomfortable. Why did she care what Eli thought of her? She shrugged. Yeah, you're right. You text your friend back. She air quoted the word friend. And I'll go think about what I'm going to tell mom and dad. Tell them you quit school to join the circus. Then, after they freak out, you can tell them you're just kidding. And then starting up a business won't look so bad. She pretended to kick Destiny in the shin. You're no help. Olivia left the room and Destiny called out to her. Don't wait too long to tell them. A voice called back. Stop flirting with your so-called friend. Destiny crossed her room and slammed her door. Then she hopped back onto her bed and picked up her phone. Eli had sent two unread texts. The first one must have been what he sent when they were standing in his kitchen. Hey, sexy. Why did those words give her pleasure? She was such a stupid schoolgirl. And then there was his next text. Tell me your favorite movie. Please. I'm desperate to know it. She texted back. Don't be. It's stupid. You'll be disappointed. His answer came quickly, as if he were waiting for her text to come. I could never be disappointed in you. She laughed. You don't even know me. Girl, that's what I'm trying to do. Get to know you. And you thwart me at every turn. Thwart? Who says that? Smart people. And Norwegians. What is it? Please tell me. No. Can I get a hint? A hint. That wouldn't be too bad. She could give him something simple. It's got romance. You've got mail? No. While you were sleeping? No. Why do you know all these romance movies? Are you a closet romantic? Three dots appeared for quite a while, showing him typing a long time. When his text finally came through, she laughed. My mom watches them and I may or may not have been in the same room while she was watching them. Just because I didn't run from the room doesn't mean I have to give up my man card. Sheesh, don't get judgy. I'm not judgy. I'm laughing. At me? No. He paused. Tell me, please, I swear I won't be judgy back. She drew her knees to her chest, a weird sensation in her belly. She suddenly wanted him to know for some odd reason. It's a stupid Hallmark movie. You probably don't know it. I love stupid Hallmark movies. You do not. You don't know that. 
She sent him a laughing emoji. Come on, girl. Give me the title. I'm dying here. Destiny smiled as she texted him back. She didn't have much to lose. Might as well tell him. It's called How to Fall in Love. Finally! I have world domination. Or just the title of your favorite movie. You choose. She laughed again. He was witty. And he made her feel things even Jack had never evoked. Destiny sobered. What was she thinking? She couldn't allow herself to feel things like that for Eli. Not when she was still working on her relationship with Jack. She owed it to Jack. Guilt over accusing Jack of cheating on her surged in her. He was planning a surprise for her. How could she have gotten it so wrong? And now he was acting strange. She was sure it was her fault. And here she was, liking Eli just a bit too much. She quickly sent off her last text to him. Gotta go. See you later. Maybe she shouldn't have told him she'd see him later. She shouldn't be seeing him at all. Chapter 6 Eli stared at the abrupt end to their conversation. Did he upset her somehow? He thought he was being clever and charming. Maybe he'd said something wrong. He opened up the web browser on his phone and searched for the movie title Destiny had given him. It looked like a typical romantic comedy, but he was curious why it was her favorite movie. He called it up on the Hallmark subscription his mom had and settled into the love seat to watch it. The door handle rattled and his mother walked in, a sack of groceries in each arm. He paused his movie and rushed to help her. Let me take those, he said. She gave him a weary smile. Thanks. He walked the five steps into the kitchen and placed the grocery sacks on the counter. How was your day? Fine. There was a layer of something behind her words. Just fine? She sighed and wiped the back of her wrist over her forehead. Working with your uncle is going to prove interesting. His mother's side of the family didn't get on too well, but when his father kicked them out of the house, they had nowhere else to go. His mother had to take a job working at the cheese factory his uncle owned. She had no formal education past high school. She'd quit college to work and put his father through med school. It was a fact he heard quite often during their arguments. You aren't getting along? She shook her head. We're all right, honey. You shouldn't worry. Shouldn't worry. Right. They were just living in the middle of Hicktown, USA with barely anything, thanks to his father. He took the house, took everything, including his dog. And soon he was going to have to park his car because they couldn't afford the insurance on it, and he had no luck getting a job in this town. Anger surged in him once again. He hated his father and what he'd done. Because of him, he'd lost everything he loved. Surfing, hanging with his friends, and Simba. He pulled a can of peas out of a sack and placed it in the cupboard, maybe a little too hard, as it made a loud thunk. His mother cringed. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. He helped his mother put away the rest of the groceries, shoving aside his emotions. Life was what it was. Getting angry at his father wouldn't change anything. He was a slime ball but wasting his anger on him would only make Eli a bitter person. How about a movie night? His mother pulled a box of microwave popcorn from the now empty sack. I bought the kind with extra butter. Perfect. I actually have a movie I wanted to watch. It's a sappy rom-com, so you'll love it. His mother laughed and gave him a weird look, but didn't comment on his movie choice. Okay. I'm up for it. I'll make us some dinner, and then we can pig out on popcorn. 
He folded the paper back and shoved it into the recycling bin. Sounds good. His mother kissed him on his forehead. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Eli couldn't find Destiny before the school bell rang, so by the time lunch came around, he was anxious to see her. He grabbed a lunch tray, filled it, then walked to her table. Amanda and Cole were already sitting beside her. Jack was nowhere to be seen. Hey, he said. Mind if I join you guys? Destiny's face was passive, like she was trying not to pay attention to him. Amanda motioned, her long hair falling over her shoulder. Sure, sit. Eli slid his tray onto the table and took a seat. Hey, Eli. Amanda set her sandwich down on her plate. Do you care about historic buildings? That came out of the blue. He wasn't sure what to say. Uh, sure? She leaned forward on the table. I mean, would you want to stop one from being demolished? Destiny elbowed Amanda. Let's talk about something less depressing. Cole nodded. Yeah, no one cares about an old dilapidated building. He'd said it under his breath, but Amanda got a look on her face like she was going to murder someone. Cole! He shrugged. What? How dare you? Cole held up his hands. Hey, don't get all upset. Not everyone goes crazy over something like that. We don't all have to be exactly like you. But it's a landmark of the community. And they are going to knock it down. Don't you care about preserving history? Cole let out a breath, his expression guarded. Sure, but I also care about progress. Amanda looked like she had just swallowed a ghost pepper. Destiny sat forward and quickly interjected. What time is that fun run on Saturday? Amanda clenched her jaw for a second before answering. Nine o'clock. And what is it for again? Amanda started talking about the local animal shelter and how all the money pledged goes to help the animals. Destiny smiled and sat back in her chair. Eli glanced at the wall. The poster he'd helped Destiny create last night hung there. Hey, look at that. Destiny motioned her chin at it. It looks great. Thanks for your help. Eli picked up his sub sandwich. Sure. Destiny took a sip from her water bottle. I watched that movie last night, Eli said. Destiny's hand flew to her mouth and she choked on her water. You what? Her cheeks turned pink. It was enlightening. The look on her face was adorable. She was obviously embarrassed, but there was something else in her eyes. Like she hadn't expected him to watch her favorite movie. Was he seeing a hint of a smile? She ducked her head down. Cole placed one of his beefy arms on the table. What movie? Nothing, Destiny said quickly. Her blush deepened. How are we doing on the spider decorations? Are we behind? We're doing okay. We'll need to work on them this afternoon. Cole motioned to Eli. You coming in today to help? Yep. Jack sauntered up to the table. Hey. Destiny jumped up and threw her arms around him. Hi, sweetie. Was she overcompensating? Jack put his arm around her and leaned in, giving her a quick kiss. Eli clenched his hand into a fist. What was Jack doing? He didn't even like Destiny anymore. Eli imagined what Jack might do if he stood up and punched him in the face. The outcome wasn't good, and he swallowed down the urge. I have to run. I just wanted to see how things were going with you guys. He gave Eli a pointed look. We're fine. Will you be helping with the dance committee tonight? The look of hope on Destiny's face made Eli's stomach twist. I'll be there. 
Destiny smiled. Great, and maybe we can do something afterwards. Jack shifted uncomfortably. Um, sure. Jack left, and Destiny sat back down and continued to talk. But Eli was no longer in the mood to listen. He ate his sandwich as quickly as he could and left the room. Chapter 7 Destiny twisted her hands together, nervously glancing around once again for Jack. The smell of popcorn permeated the air as she waited on the bench outside of the movie theater in the mall. They had made plans to have a date tonight, but as soon as they got to the theater, he'd gotten a phone call and had to take it. He told her to wait on the bench for him. The movie started in three minutes, and Jack hadn't gotten back yet. She exhaled and ran a hand through her hair. Things were not going well with Jack, and Destiny couldn't help but feel it was her fault. She was the one who messed things up, and she couldn't seem to get things back on track between them. Jack was elusive. He broke his promises all the time now. And when he was with her, he was distant, like he didn't want to be there. When they first began dating, Jack was the perfect boyfriend. He would set up elaborate dates with her, making sure she was happy. Her favorite one was when he set up an outdoor theater screen on the side of his house. He'd set up a sound system and had rented an old-fashioned popcorn machine. They sat on a blanket and watched a movie. It had been super sweet. And now, here she was, waiting on a bench in the mall, no sign of him. Her phone chimed, and she pulled it out of her clutch purse. Sorry, something's come up. I asked Eli to meet you there. He can take you to the movie, then take you home. Before she could react, Eli came around the corner, his hands in his coat pockets. He nodded at her. Hey. Destiny was too mad to be polite. She shoved her phone back in her purse and stood. What's going on? Eli shrugged. Jack texted me, asked me if I would meet you here. He squinted at her. What's wrong? She pressed her lips together, anger heating her face. Why would he do that? A look crossed his face, and she couldn't quite figure out what it meant. I don't know. Her stomach soured. How could Jack have done that to her? Pass her off onto another guy like that? What was he thinking? Well, I don't want to go to the movie anymore. What movie were you going to see? New York Under Fire. That one that doesn't seem to have a plot. Just a bunch of explosions. Destiny folded her arms. It was Jack's idea. Eli exhaled and looked down at the tile flooring. I'm sorry he ditched you. That wasn't cool. Tears swelled in her eyes and she blinked them back. She didn't want to cry in front of Eli. That would be stupid. Jack was treating her poorly, but she knew why. He was getting back at her for what she did. She sniffed and took out a tissue from her purse and dabbed it on the corners of her eyes. Do you need a ride home? She nodded, not trusting her voice to speak. His expression softened, and he took her arm. Come on. Let's go. He led her through the mall to the exit with the largest parking lot. As she walked, she tried to calm down. Maybe Jack really did have something important come up. He wouldn't do this to her on purpose, would he? Maybe it was an emergency. Eli opened the door and a blast of cold air hit her. She pulled her denim jacket around her. Eli shrugged out of his coat and held it out to her. Here, put this on. Destiny felt dumb. Why hadn't she looked at the forecast again? How many times did she have to freeze to death to learn? She put her arms into his coat. It was warm and smelled like him. 
A tingly feeling settled in her stomach. Thanks. He shoved his hands in his pants pockets. No problem. He opened the passenger side of his car and she climbed in. After he got in the driver's seat, he grabbed the steering wheel, his jaw working. Why are you still with him? Especially after he pulls stunts like that. Destiny felt the urge to defend him. He might have had an emergency. Eli turned to her. Is that what he told you? He said something came up. Eli frowned, but he didn't say anything else about it. Want to go to the spotted cow? Get some ice cream? That actually sounded good. Yeah. He put his car into gear. I think they sell hot chocolate, if you're cold. No way. I don't get people who only eat ice cream in the summer. Ice cream is awesome and should be enjoyed all year long. I'd never pass on a cold treat just because it's cold outside. Me neither. He grinned at her. What's your favorite flavor there? Strawberry cheesecake? That's a good one. She turned to him, suddenly feeling in a better mood. What about you? Peanut butter fudge. Have you tried the one with brownie bits in it? He laughed. That's my second favorite. She made a face. How long have you lived here? Like two weeks? How have you had time to find a favorite and a second favorite? He stretched his arm holding the steering wheel with one hand. I'm just that talented. The Spotted Cow was a local mom-and-pop place with homemade ice cream. It was a town favorite. The decor was black and white, with red chairs and booths, which gave it a 50s look. They ordered and picked a booth. Destiny stuck her spoon in her dish. She was no longer mad at Jack. She was worried about him. She took out her phone and texted him. Are you okay? No reply came. She set her phone on the table. Eli's gaze flicked to it. Did he answer you? She shook her head, feeling foolish once again. They sat for a moment, eating their ice cream. Then Eli pointed his spoon at her. You haven't collected on your free question. That's right. He promised her one truthful answer yesterday. And she'd thought of a good one. You swear you'll answer truthfully? He raised one eyebrow at her, a look that gave her more flutters. Why? Are you afraid I'll lie? Not lie, exactly. Maybe just evade the truth. He set his spoon down and looked into her eyes. I swear I'll tell you the honest truth. His smooth voice washed over her, and she believed him. Do you really not know how to dance? He got a funny look on his face. He leaned back and stared at her, his lips trying not to smile. I know how to dance. Then why did you ask me to come teach you? Something passed between them. It was electric. She could almost touch it. He finally let the smile crack his face. That's one too many questions. Blast it all, he was right. He said he would answer one question truthfully. He wasn't going to give her more than that. She made a face. Cheater. Just playing by the rules. How can I earn another question? He put a scoop of ice cream in his mouth, hiding another smile. After he swallowed, he said, I don't know. Got any ideas? She kicked him under the table and he laughed. Stop it, she said. All right, answer three more questions for me, then I'll answer this one. Her mouth dropped. How is that fair? Three for one? He shrugged and scooped up another bite. I'm willing to negotiate. One for one. Straight trade. That's fair. He shook his head. No way. You want your answer more than I want mine. You have more to lose. You should pay more. Destiny didn't want to argue with him. Fine. 
Ask me two questions. Anything. I'll answer honestly, but then you have to answer mine. His eyes smiled at her. You have a deal. She took in his expression and wondered if she'd made a bad decision. He looked like he just won a poker game. He pushed away his empty cup and picked up his napkin to wipe his lips. She waited for him to ask his questions, but he just sat there, looking at her. Okay, get it over with. He folded his hands together. I think I'd like to savor this for a while. A deal like this doesn't come along every day. You're making me nervous. Don't be nervous. He grinned. I won't abuse this power I've been given. With great power comes great responsibility. He pointed at her and laughed. You are a closet superhero nerd. Yes. Is that your first question? He slapped the table. No, that was an observation. You can't count that. Then hurry up. I think your questions should have a time limit. He stood up and gathered their trash. Can I ask the first one when we're in the car? She didn't see why not. All right. He tossed their empty cups and spoons. Then he opened the door for her and they walked to his car. He looked a little cold, and she felt bad because she still had his coat on. But he didn't say anything, so she didn't either. She held her breath while they got into his car, waiting for him to finally ask her. He started up his car, adjusted the heat, then turned to her. Question one. He stared at her, his expression sobering. Just ask! What would it take to make you dump Jack? Her stomach flipped, and she stiffened. Eli held up a hand. Don't get mad, it's just a question. Think about it and answer truthfully. Destiny took in a breath and let it out slowly. He was right. It was just a question. And if she were being honest, she was close to calling it quits earlier this evening when Jack left her sitting on the bench and sent Eli to take his place. What a jerk move. She shifted in her seat. Honest answer. What would she say to Eli? She stared down at her nails. I don't know. He frowned. You can't not know. I honestly don't know. I mean, I realize Jack and I have some issues, but I'm trying to work through them. You're trying? What about him? Is that your second question? Eli shook his head. No, never mind. I'll take your non-answer. But I get one more question. Anticipation gelled in her stomach. Eli leaned closer to her. She waited for it. If you weren't dating Jack, would you let me kiss you? Chapter 8 Destiny huffed and yanked on her seatbelt. You are an impossible flirt. I don't know why I even thought you'd be serious. Eli hadn't been trying to flirt. It was a question that had filled his mind ever since last night. Ever since he'd started staring at her lips. But he chuckled anyway, like it was a joke, and put the car into drive. What's your address? She pointed to the street. Just go that way. I'll tell you when to turn. He followed her directions, disappointed she'd blown off both of his questions. He was hoping for an honest conversation with her about Jack. He wanted to know where she stood with him. He was a jerk, and she had to know it, right? She motioned to a large house on the corner of the street. It had four tall pillars on the front that made it look stately. A balcony stood on the second floor. This is mine. He pulled into the driveway and cut the engine. Nice house. It was built in the early 1900s. I think 1920 or something like that. My parents love it because it's got all the charm and 
intricate woodwork from a home of that age, but it's been totally updated, so no need to worry about the plumbing or electrical. I'd love to see the inside. Come on, I'll show you. He hopped out of the car and joined her on the sidewalk. She opened a gate, and they walked through. Her front door had a stained glass inlay. She opened the door and entered. Most people love the grand staircase. It curved up to the second floor like he'd seen in the movies. It's great. She removed his coat and hung it on a hook in the entryway. Then she took him on a tour of the main floor. She showed him the crown molding, the built-in wooden cabinets, and the updated kitchen. Then she turned to him. Want to see my favorite thing about this house? To be honest, all he wanted was to extend the time he spent with her. He nodded. Sure. Follow me. She took him up the spiral staircase to the hallway. Then she opened what looked like a cupboard door. Inside was a shaft with a rope on a pulley. What's that? She pulled on the rope until a box appeared. It looked like a small elevator. A dumbwaiter. Where does it go? Down to the laundry room. Back when the house was first built, it was used to carry clothes back and forth to the washroom, but we don't really use it for that. What do you use it for? She laughed, and he loved the sound of it. Jess and I would send notes back and forth when we were kids. An old-fashioned way to text. She laughed again, and he decided to try to get her to do that more often. It's really just a curiosity. When we redid the hall bathroom, Dad asked if he could take it out, but I begged him to leave it. I think it's just so cool. Let's try it out. He held out his hand. Give me some paper. Destiny got a funny look on her face. For real? Why not? Go down to the other side. I'll send you a note. He loved the look of delight on her face. Okay. She went into a bedroom, which he assumed was hers, and came out with a legal pad of paper and a pen. I'll be down in a second. He put the pad of paper against the wall and wrote on it. Your house is cool. I can see why you like the dumbwaiter. I think it's fun. By the way, you never answered my last question. Destiny's voice carried up through the shaft. Okay, I'm ready. He tore off the paper and folded it up, then sent it down by pulling on the rope. When the rope wouldn't move anymore, he stopped. Got it, she yelled up. Okay, now you have to write something back to me. Already on it. A door opened, and a girl stepped into the hallway. She looked like an older version of Destiny with dark hair. She made a face at him. Who are you? I'm Eli, Destiny's friend. She pointed at him. The movie guy. Then she laughed. Friend. Yeah, right. What was she talking about? Eli felt strange, standing there at the dumbwaiter being inspected by a girl he didn't know. What? Nothing. Then she squinted at him. What are you doing? The ropes inside the dumbwaiter moved, and the pulley started to squeak. The girl rolled her eyes. Oh, no. Don't tell me she's downstairs. Eli smirked. Okay, I won't tell you. The small elevator appeared, and the girl reached in and grabbed the note before Eli could. He was so stunned, no words would come out of his mouth. The girl read the note laughed again, then tossed it at him. Yeah, friends. She shook her head and went back into her bedroom and shut the door. Eli unfolded the note. She'd answered under his original message. I'm glad you like the dumbwaiter, but I'm not going to answer your question because it was said in jest. Any question asked in jest is immediately disqualified. He wrote her back. I just not. 
answer the question. Be honest. He sent the note back down to her, a bit nervous that she wouldn't answer it, and maybe a little more nervous that she would. It took forever for her to send the note back up, but when the rope started moving, he let out a breath. The note appeared, and he grabbed it. Two words stared at him. It depends. He scribbled his response. On what? When her note came back, he could hardly get to it fast enough. Are we alone or in the crowded hallway at school? How long have we known each other? Have we gone on a date? If so, how many? How long has it been since I broke up with Jack? He wanted to answer every single one of them, but not on the paper. He set the notebook and pen in the dumbwaiter, but didn't pull the ropes. He crept down the stairs and through the kitchen to the laundry room. He came in behind her. She stared into the shaft, waiting for him. We're alone, he said. Oh! Destiny turned around, slamming the door to the dumbwaiter. Her hair got caught on her lips and she brushed it away. He walked toward her. We've known each other for over two weeks. Yes, we've been on a date. We went out for ice cream. If you count the movie we watched together, we've been on two dates. Eli, wait. I'm not done. He took another step forward and placed a hand on the wall behind her. It's been zero seconds since you texted Jack and told him you were through with him. Destiny stared up at him and swallowed. Are you done now? He leaned in. She backed up a fraction of an inch, but the door to the dumbwaiter stopped her. Yes, he said, looking at her lips. Electricity buzzed between them. I'm done. Is that mean? To text a breakup? That's not what he expected her to say, but her words sent hope and desire crashing through him. I don't think so. But if you're worried about it, you could call him. Destiny stood silent for a moment. He wanted her to take out her phone and call Jerkface. He wanted her to end it right now. Then he would be free to make her his. But she didn't reach for her phone. Instead, she placed her hand on his chest and gently pushed him back. We were talking hypothetically, right? He wasn't. He was talking about kissing her. Right now. But he couldn't. Not while she was still Jack's girl. He took a step back. I guess. Disappointment laced his words. Then let's talk reality again. You have to answer my question. Why I asked you to come teach me how to dance? She nodded. I think you know the answer. Her gaze flicked over him. Tell me anyway. Because I wanted to spend more time with you. He wrapped his arm around her waist and took her hand in his, as if they were dancing. Like this? He started moving to a silent rhythm. She didn't resist his impromptu slow dance. She moved in time with him, as if she could hear the same imaginary music. There's a real dance coming up. I know, but you'll be going with someone else. Why did that make his heart so heavy? He barely knew her. And yet, he felt like he'd known her forever. Unless I break it off. A thrill raced through him. He raised an eyebrow. Will you? I don't know. I need to talk to him. Face to face. Pretty hard to do. He's avoiding you. Eli pulled her even closer, loving the way she felt in his arms. Destiny placed her cheek on his shoulder. I know, she said, her voice so low it was almost a whisper. The sadness threaded through her words made his throat constrict. He's no good for you. 
he whispered. He was, in the beginning. His hands splayed across her lower back. She felt so fragile, like a china doll. Everything is always good in the beginning. She closed her eyes and snuggled into him. Then I guess I need an endless supply of beginnings. He pressed his lips on the top of her head, breathing in the coconut smell of her hair. Good idea. I shouldn't be doing this with you, she said quietly. Guilt surged in him. He shouldn't be doing this either. He should never have told Jack yes. He hated playing with her emotions. Then a crazy thought popped into his head. Tell her. Everything. He entertained the notion. He could confess everything, how Jack approached him and how he needed the money, so he agreed. Then how he felt bad, but how he liked her and wanted to be with her. Maybe she would dump Jack then. But it could go the other way. She could get mad at him. He debated for a moment, then found himself saying, It's only a dance. Feels like more. Then end it with Jack. He hadn't expected those words to come out as forcefully as they had, but he couldn't take them back. He meant them with every fiber of his being. He wanted her to be with him. He held his breath, waiting for what she would say. She pulled back and looked up at him. Okay, she whispered. Chapter 9 Destiny's heart raced. Had she just said she was going to break it off with Jack? For real? She stared up at Eli, her body filled with anticipation. Eli's muscles tensed. When? Destiny licked her lips, her head feeling mushy. What was she doing? She liked Eli a lot. But was she ready to break things off with Jack just because Eli made her stomach flutter? And yet... Being in Eli's arms felt amazing. She'd danced with Jack several times and had never felt anything like this. She was so confused. Eli didn't seem to like that she hadn't answered. Do it now. Olivia walked into the room, and Destiny jumped back, feeling guilty for being caught so close to Eli. Olivia smirked and folded her arms. There you two are. Destiny tried to speak normally. Olivia, this is Eli, a friend from school. This is my sister. Eli nodded at her. We've met. Really? Upstairs. Eli grinned. But she didn't tell me your name. I came to tell you mom texted me. They're coming home in a half hour, so... You'd better finish making out before they get here. Olivia turned on her heel and left the room. Eli's grin widened. Well, we'd better finish making out then. She turned from him. Shut up, she said under her breath. You should go. He chuckled behind her as they walked through the house. She led him to the entryway where his coat hung. She turned to him. Thanks for cheering me up tonight. I was upset about Jack. She didn't want to finish that sentence. She felt guilty for all the flirting she'd done with Eli. He shrugged into his coat, then took a step toward her. Call me. Tomorrow. After you break things off. Destiny nodded, unsure of what she would say if she opened her mouth. Her brain wasn't working right and she was so confused about Jack and Eli. He ran a finger down the side of her cheek. He looked like he wanted to say something else, but then changed his mind. He walked out of her house, leaving her to stand there and stare at the empty space where he'd been. 
Her face tingled where he'd touched her. She felt like the dumbest person in the world. Why was she waiting to talk to Jack in person? He'd blown her off so many times in the last two weeks, he didn't even deserve another chance. What she was feeling with Eli was real and amazing. She totally could be kissing him goodnight right now if she just called Jack and let him know it was over. Destiny opened her front door, nerves racing through her. She was going to do it. She was going to tell Eli she'd break it off right now. She slipped quietly outside. The last thing she needed was to have Olivia come looking for her. She saw Eli by his car. Wait, she called to him. He turned around. The lamp in the front yard shed light on his features. He looked like one of those old-time movie stars, handsome with high cheekbones. He waited for her to approach him. What do you need? She should have been cold, but she wasn't. The thought of kissing Eli sent a wave of warmth through her. You... He took her hand, his touch light, timid. Call him. She let go of his hand and took out her phone. Her fingers quivered as she pressed Jack's name. He answered on the third ring. Hello? Jack? Hi, Destiny. She paused, suddenly wavering. What happened tonight? Oh, sorry, I had something come up. I know, you said that. What was it? A girl's voice came through the line. Who are you talking to, Jack? Anger surged in Destiny's chest. She was such a fool. Are you with a girl? No, babe, there's no one. She gritted her teeth. That's it. We are through. Don't call me. Don't text me. I don't want to see you again. She hung up on him, her anger making her shake. Jack was seeing someone else. Probably had been for weeks now. She couldn't believe how blind she'd been. Why had she taken him back? She should have listened to Jessica. Eli shifted his weight. I'm sorry. She shoved her phone in her back pocket. What are you sorry for? He's the jerk who is cheating on me and I was too stupid to see it. She blinked back tears. She was such an idiot. Why was she crying? She'd taken Jack's abuse for too long. It was good they were through. Eli pulled her into his arms. He didn't say anything. He just held her. She snuggled into his warm chest and closed her eyes, letting the tears slide down her cheeks. He's no good for you, Eli said. She looked up at him. I know. Eli brushed the pad of his thumb over her cheek, catching a tear. The sensation of his skin on hers made her heart race. Thank you for being there for me tonight. You already said that. I know, I'm stalling. His lips quirked up into a smile. Why are you stalling? The truth? His hand pressed against the small of her back. Yes. Because I'm hoping you'll kiss me? He leaned forward until he was almost touching her. I don't know that that's a good idea now. Why? You're hurting. I don't want to be the guy that takes advantage. His voice sounded raw. Horse. Don't get me wrong. I want to kiss you. But not like this. Disappointment darted through her, but she appreciated how thoughtful he was being. Okay. Let's go out tomorrow. Anywhere you'd like. He nuzzled her neck. And I get three more questions. She would have agreed to anything at the moment. All right. Where do you want me to take you? 
My favorite place to go this time of year. She smiled at him. The pumpkin patch. He tried to hide a smile, but it looked like he lost. You want to go pick out pumpkins? She nodded. And then we can carve them. Sounds like a date to me. He leaned down and kissed her forehead. I'll pick you up at ten. Her insides pooled into mush as he gave her one last hug. Then he let go and got into his car. She watched him drive away, his taillights disappearing down the street. Her insides hummed as she walked back inside her house. Her sister stood at the window. Just friends, huh? Shut up. Olivia folded her arms. What about Jack? I broke up with him. Olivia made a face. When? Destiny suddenly felt tired and didn't want to talk to her sister anymore. She took off her shoes and motioned to the door. Just now, outside. Oh, that's what you were doing. Maybe if she turned the conversation around, Olivia would leave her alone. Have you talked to mom and dad yet? She broke eye contact. No. Probably should do that. Soon. Destiny shrugged and left Olivia standing at the window. She sprinted up the stairs and went into her bedroom, her emotions all over the place. Jack was out of her life for good. She hated him. He was everything Jessica had said and more. Why had she been such a fool? She felt both stupid and angry at herself. But she shoved all thoughts of Jack away. Because as much as she hated what Jack had done, she was glad it was over because there was something going on between her and Eli. And now she was free to explore it. She took off her makeup and dressed for bed. As she climbed under the covers, her phone sounded. A text message from Eli. Sleep well. See you in the morning. Her heart fluttered as she answered back. You too? She bit her lip and tried not to smile, but was severely unsuccessful. She pulled out her nightstand drawer and grabbed the book she'd picked up from the library after school. Animal Farm. She opened it and started reading. Chapter 10 Eli pulled into Destiny's driveway. To say he was excited about this date would be an understatement. He couldn't wait to spend more time with Destiny. His phone rang and he pulled it out of his pocket. Crap, it was Jack. He quickly answered, making sure Destiny hadn't come out of her house yet. Hello? Hey, you did it! Jack laughed on the other end of the line. Was she with you when she called last night? Just hearing Jack's voice made Eli mad. A throbbing started in his temples. He stared at Destiny's front door. Yeah. Well, Gabe's gotta give me that 200 bucks now. We have a witness and everything. You're brilliant. He didn't feel brilliant. He felt slimy, like he needed another shower now. Okay, I gotta run. Okay, man, I'll give you the money on Monday. Whatever. Even though he could really use that hundred dollars, Eli didn't really want it anymore. It felt odd, like he'd profited from Destiny's pain. He hung up with Jack and got out of his car. He pressed the doorbell and waited. The door opened and Olivia stood there, an apple in one hand. She looked him over. You're here for Destiny? That was an odd question. Of course he was. Yeah. Destiny! She yelled, your boyfriend's here. A thrill coursed through him. Was he Destiny's boyfriend now? He hoped it was true. 
Destiny made him feel things he'd never felt before. He liked who he was when he was with her. Destiny appeared at the door. She wore a sweater and a denim jacket and knee-high boots. But his favorite thing about her was her smile. I'll be home later, she said to her sister. She fell into step beside him. He put his arm around her. It felt natural, like he'd been doing it forever. How are you today? I'm fine. She looked fine, but he knew it couldn't be easy getting over what Jack did to her. Really? Or are you just saying that? She paused, her fingers twisting together. She leaned against the passenger door. I won't lie and say I'm not still upset about Jack, but it stings less when I'm with you. His heart went out to her. I'm glad. He pulled her into a hug, then opened her door for her. He plugged the address to the pumpkin farm into his GPS and pulled out of the driveway. I don't want to cause you more pain, but I'm curious about a couple of things. Do you mind if I ask about you and Jack? Destiny pressed her lips together and shook her head. No. Why did you let Jack step all over you like that? His question didn't sound so rude in his head, but now that the words were out, he wished he'd phrased it better. Sorry, that sounds bad. Destiny closed her eyes. No, you're right. I did let him walk on me. Why? He asked quietly. She took in a breath and then exhaled, rubbing her forehead. I don't know. I guess it could be because Jack was my first real boyfriend, you know? Before Jack, I'd had crushes. Little girl stuff. When I was in middle school, I went to the movies with a boy I liked. But my parents drove us and then sat behind us in the theater. It was more like a friend thing even though he'd held my hand. We even kissed, but it was just a peck. Jack was my first boyfriend that counted. He had his own car. We went on real dates. We kissed. She looked at Eli and blushed. He was my first real kiss. Why did the thought of Destiny kissing Jack make him want to punch something? Eli pressed the gas pedal, an urge to go faster in his gut. Maybe to get away from the thought of her with that jerkwad. But he understood where Destiny was coming from. I get it. Destiny pushed her cuticles back with her long red fingernails. It was stupid of me to hang on to something that had turned toxic. I see that now. But in the moment, I thought it was my fault. Your fault? How so? I had gotten angry with him a few weeks ago and broke it off. He convinced me he was not sneaking around, but he was planning a surprise for my birthday. I thought I had misjudged him. When is your birthday? It was last week. Nice. Eli felt kind of like a slug, even though he had just moved to town and didn't know her well. Sorry I missed it. She laughed. It's okay. It wasn't that great. I thought Jack was planning something big, but he just took me to the lake and we ate sandwiches I'm pretty sure he got his mom to make. Eli was tired of hearing about Jack. Why had he brought him up in the first place? He turned onto a country road and changed the subject. I have three more questions, if I remember right. You just asked me some questions. I think it's my turn. He didn't care as long as they weren't talking about Jack anymore. Go ahead. What happened to make you move here? He clenched his jaw. She must have noticed because she placed her hand on his arm. I'm sorry if that's a sore subject for you. It's okay. He was still angry with his father, but it would be good to talk about it. I'll tell you. He pulled the car into a dirt parking lot filled with vans and other mom vehicles. He cut the engine and sat there for a moment, trying to decide how to start. 
He tapped the steering wheel with his thumb. My parents never had a great marriage. A lot of fighting. I think it's because my father was such a control freak. OCD, everything had to be perfect. That had to be hard. Yeah. That was the understatement of the year. He couldn't describe the way he had to tiptoe around the house when his father wasn't at work. Luckily, he was at work a lot. It was. So your parents divorced? He fisted his hands. Not until we found out he had another family. Destiny's eyes grew wide. Another family? Yeah. He looked at her. We found out he had another woman on the side. Had a kid with her. Whoa! Seriously? Yes. That's horrible. Destiny took his hand and gently pried his fingers open. He hadn't realized how tightly he was clenching them. Mom sent him divorce papers. He blew up. Told her he could afford a better lawyer and would take everything from her. And that's pretty much what happened. Mom could have fought for more, but she was worn down. In the end, she said she didn't want his tainted money. I don't blame her. I just wish we could figure out a way to get my dog back. That's messed up. Destiny blinked and looked out the windshield. He stared at her. Are you crying? She wiped at the corner of her eye. I'm just sad for you. That was the sweetest thing he'd ever seen. Come here. He pulled her into a hug as best he could with the car console between them. He kissed her temple. You're amazing. Because I'm a sap and I cry at everything? No, because you're empathetic. You're endearing. He breathed in the scent of her coconut shampoo. And you smell really good right now. She laughed. Come on, let's go in. We have pumpkins to pick out. He kind of wanted to stay in the car and make out with her, but he nodded and hopped out so he could open her door. He took her hand and they walked to the entrance. The woman took his money and stamped their hands. Is the haunted forest open in the daytime? Destiny asked. You can walk through it, but there aren't any live actors in there until it's dark. Great. Eli was confused. There's a haunted forest with live actors here? I thought this was just about picking out pumpkins. Destiny looked at him funny. You've never been to a pumpkin patch before? Yeah, but there were just pumpkins there. She grinned. Then you'll love this. She grabbed his hand and led him through the gate. The farm was bustling with people, mostly kids, but there were teens as well. Halloween decorations and buildings were everywhere. There was a snack shack, several haunted houses, and several others he couldn't figure out. Let's find the haunted forest. Destiny tugged him in the direction of a dirt path. Why are you so on fire to walk through the haunted forest? What's in there? Just fake spiders and stuff. She grinned at him. But it's very private. He was all for it then. He followed her over a couple of hills, by a corn maze, a bouncy house full of kids, and a fake jail where kids were locking each other up. A spooky-looking gate sported a sign that read, Haunted Forest. Hours, sunset to midnight. She opened the gate, and they stepped over a small bridge and entered the woods. They walked down the path, passing by a headless horseman propped up against a tree. A little further in, they could no longer hear the children laughing and screaming. She looked up at him. I think we're alone now. I see. That was your devious plan. To bring me into the woods so you could have your way with me. She poked him in the side. You're such a flirt, but I'm starting to think you're all talk and no action. He reached out to grab her, but she jumped back, giggling. I'll show you action, he said, chasing after her. 
She ran deeper into the woods. Only if you can catch me. His blood pumped as he ran after her. He managed to grab her arm and pulled her to a stop. He backed up until she was pressed up against a tree. He leaned down, close to her lips. Gotcha. She placed her hand on his chest. Your heart is beating so fast. That's because you're driving me crazy. Her lips curved up into a smile. I kind of like you when you're crazy. He chuckled. Good. Her smile faded and she stared into his eyes. Eli? Yeah? If you don't kiss me now, I think I'm going to explode, she whispered. Me too, he said. Chapter 11 Destiny's heart pounded as she waited for Eli to kiss her. She didn't have to wait long. He leaned down and brushed his lips across hers. The sensation was nothing like she expected. She'd kissed Jack, and it had felt good, but this was indescribable. A thousand butterflies exploded from a cannon in her stomach and raced through her insides. She was instantly on fire, and yet goosebumps erupted over her skin. She was fire and lightning and electricity all at once, gasping for air and yet needing nothing but Eli. Her lips slid across his in a hungry dance. Nerve endings exploded, and her heart raced. She pulled him closer to her, needing more of him. He quickened the pace of the kiss. Waves of pleasure crashed through her. She was a million stories high, falling faster than she'd ever fallen. She wanted nothing more than to be in Eli's arms forever. The rough bark of the tree bit into her back, but she didn't care. It was a stark contrast to his soft lips exploring hers. She wanted to breathe him in, lock him in a place inside of her where he would never escape. She felt totally safe with him, like she could tell him anything, and he would hold it sacred. His phone vibrated in his pocket, and she realized she'd been hearing that sound as they kissed. Repeatedly. Someone needed Eli. Disappointment soured in her stomach, and she pulled away from him. You should answer whoever that is. I don't want to. He kissed her again, and the fire flickered over her skin. His lips were tantalizing, teasing her, nipping at her bottom lip. His phone vibrated again. She forced herself away. What if it's important? It's not. His eyes were half closed. He kissed her again, and she thought her knees might buckle. When another sound came from his phone, she reached into his back pocket and grabbed it, pulling it away from him. Maybe it is, she said, looking at the screen. No! Eli yelled, but she'd already seen it. Jack's name. Confusion clouded her mind. Jack is texting you? Why? Eli looked like he'd been caught stealing from the cash register. Can I have my phone back? A heavy feeling spread through destiny. Eli was keeping something from her. Lying, just like Jack started doing. She wanted to cry. She slapped his phone into Eli's hand and turned from him, a cold lump of stone sitting in her stomach. Des, don't be upset. It's nothing. He put his arms around her and pulled her to his chest. She remained stiff. What does Jack want with you? He asked me this morning if you were with me when you broke up with him. Jack was jealous? 
upset that she was with Eli? That made sense, but why had Jack been texting Eli instead of her? She looked up at him. Then he knows we're together now. Yeah. And he's upset. He paused. Kind of. She placed her hands on Eli's cheeks. I'm sorry I jumped to conclusions. I should know better. You're not like Jack. Eli's face was hard to read. Something crossed behind his eyes, but it just flashed by and was gone. No, I'm not, he said. She kissed him again, but it was different. Somehow it had lost a little of the magic from a moment ago. He pulled back. Are you hungry? We could get some snacks. Sure. She slipped her hand into his, and they walked along the path toward the gate. Do you know anywhere in this town that's hiring? Eli hooked his thumb into his pocket. You need a job? Yeah. Mom's job doesn't cover much more than the necessities. My dad refuses to pay for my car insurance, so I have to come up with it or I won't be able to drive my car anymore. Why would he buy you a fancy car but then not pay for the insurance? I think it's a way to pit me against my mom. He kicked a rock and watched it skitter across the dry leaves. He's all about playing games and manipulation. That sucks. It does. Destiny took in a breath and tried to think of a place that hired teenagers. You could try the coffee shop or the theater. I know several teens who work there. Or the hardware store. Okay, I'll get applications. They reached the gate, and Destiny playfully turned and pressed her back up against it. Are you sure you're ready to leave the haunted forest? Yeah, I'm starved. He tugged on the gate, and she stepped out of the way. She tried not to show her disappointment as they left. Okay. Eli felt bad about turning down another makeout session with Destiny, but he couldn't kiss her. Not right now. Not when he was feeling so guilty about what he'd done. Again, the thought came to him to tell her everything. He knew that was the right thing to do. He just had to gather up the courage, find the right time to say something. And now wasn't the right time. He scanned the list of items available at the snack shack. What would you like? Nachos. They got their food and sat down at a table. Eli wasn't very hungry, but he shoved his food in his mouth anyway. What was he doing? Why was he acting so odd? He needed to calm down or Destiny would know something was off with him. Destiny dipped a corn chip into her cheese sauce. Do you miss California? Eli nodded. Yeah, it's so cold here, and I miss the ocean. I bet. We lived about five minutes from the beach. Simba and I would go walking along the sand almost every day. Destiny's mouth pulled down. Aw, your dog is named Simba? That's a sweet name. What kind of a dog is he? A Labrador retriever. She leaned forward, a look of sympathy on her face. Does it hurt to talk about him? Kind of, but he didn't want to admit it. I'm fine. Do you have a picture of him? Eli grinned. Would it make me less of a man if I said I did? Destiny laughed and shook her head. Of course not. Let me see. He pulled out his phone and opened it to his photos. Then he scrolled through until he found a good one. Simba was sitting on the deck, hoping for a bite of whatever it was Eli was eating. He looked so cute, his little begging face on. Here. Destiny took his phone. He's adorable. He looks almost white. He's yellow. That photo is a bit washed out. He took his phone back and scrolled to another photo. 
this one of Simba playing in the waves on the beach. Oh my gosh, he's just so pretty. She handed back the phone. Do you think if you moved into a house that took pets, you could bring him here? Mom and I have talked about it. The problem is there aren't any rentals in our price range that take pets. Maybe something will open up. He nodded. Maybe. I'm sorry, did I start us down a depressing conversation? She put her hand on top of his. It's fine. But I am anxious to ask my other questions. Destiny looked surprised. I thought you already asked them all. He grinned. I think I have an endless supply. She rolled her eyes, but she was smiling, so he didn't take it poorly. <laughs> Whatever, go ahead. If you could spend the day with anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? He took a sip from his soda. Destiny blinked, like she was getting emotional. My nana. Now Eli felt bad for asking that question. She passed? Destiny nodded. Yeah, she died last year. She was the sweetest. She would go out of her way to make me feel special. I guess she somehow knew I always felt like I wasn't as good at things as Olivia. I was never as popular. Everything Olivia did was perfect. I couldn't be that way. But Nana made me feel like I was her favorite. Grandmothers are like that. Destiny wiped at the corners of her eyes with the pads of her thumbs. Yeah, she was special. We would get on Pinterest and go searching for crafts. Nana loved to make things, and we would look for ideas of things that didn't look too hard to make. Then we'd go to Hobby Lobby and buy all kinds of things, then go back to her house and create. That sounds fun. It was. Okay, let's change the question a little. If you could spend the day with a famous person, who would you choose? Sean Mendes. Eli made a face. Really? Why him? Destiny raised an eyebrow. Have you seen Sean Mendes? I'm beginning to regret this question. Destiny laughed and shrugged. <laughs> you asked? And now we're moving on. He didn't want to hear about Destiny's celebrity crushes. It made him cranky. Chapter 12 Destiny struggled to get the front door open while holding the huge pumpkin she'd picked out. Eli had offered to hold it, but he had his own massive pumpkin, and she didn't want to stick him with holding two of them. She finally got the door open. Let's take them to the kitchen. Eli followed her in and used his behind to close the door. Destiny laughed. Good move. Is that called the butt move? I have a very talented rear end. I'll take your word for it. She loved the way Eli flirted with her. It dissipated the weirdness from earlier. She set her pumpkin down on the kitchen counter. Woo, that was heavy. I think you bought the largest one in the field. Oh, so not true. Yours is bigger. Remember the scale? Mine weighed more, but just because of the weight distribution. Yours is larger. Weight distribution? You're so full of it. You're just making stuff up now. Destiny opened a cupboard and started rummaging around. We'll see which one is larger. She pulled out a cookie sheet and placed it on top of both pumpkins. It tilted showing his was larger. Wait, that's not fair. Mine might be taller, but yours is bigger around. She shoved his shoulder. Stop it, she said, laughing. Do you have some carving knives? She turned to the butcher block on the counter and grabbed a serrated knife. Yep. Eli took it from her and stabbed the top of his pumpkin, the knife sliding in. This always feels so violent. I know, right? She pulled out another knife and attacked the top of her pumpkin as well. Eli was the first to cut a circle and pull off the top. A string of pumpkin goo hung down from the lid. 
here's the best part. Yuck. You like pulling the slime out? No, the seeds. He grabbed a handful of the white pumpkin seeds and plopped them onto the cookie sheet Destiny had set aside. Don't you cook them? I've never done that. Oh, I have to cook them for you then. They're the best. Pull all the seeds out and put them on this sheet. I'll season them. How do I get the goop off them? Destiny pulled on the top of her pumpkin. You just separate the slime from the seeds. You don't have to wash them or anything. When they cook, it will cook the pumpkin stuff and it will taste really good. He reached into his pumpkin and pulled a large handful of seeds and junk out. Okay. She smiled. You know, when I was a kid, we used to have pumpkin gut fights. Eli grinned. You and Olivia? Destiny snorted. (laughs) No, me and Jessica. Olivia wouldn't touch the stuff. She's too prissy. Olivia walked into the kitchen. Who are you calling prissy? Destiny pulled up a handful of pumpkin guts. Want to help us deceive the pumpkins? Olivia's mouth screwed up in a disgusted expression. (laughs) No way. Then you. Destiny pulled the seeds off her handful, then tossed the rest into the trash. Olivia stuck her nose near one of the pumpkins. That stinks. You guys are gross. We're just carving pumpkins. You never did this as a kid? Eli grabbed a spoon to get more goop out of his pumpkin. No. She stepped back. But you guys have fun. She left the kitchen. Eli pulled a stringy glob of guts out. He held it out to Destiny. So how does one have a pumpkin guts fight? Do I just toss this on you? Destiny backed away from him, her slimy hands held up. Hey, that's when I was young. I didn't wear angora when I was a kid. He took a step toward her, a wicked grin on his face. It will wash. Don't you dare. She meant it to sound menacing, but she couldn't help the smile from creeping onto her face. Oh, I dare, he said, coming closer to her. Before he could slime her, she grabbed his handful and smashed it into the side of his face. The stringy guts fell to the floor. Eli gasped and wiped his hand on her cheek. The cold, wet pumpkin goo slid down her skin. She shrieked and grabbed more slime from her pumpkin. Stay away, he called out as he ran around the other side of the island. She came at him, but he was too fast. She ran around the other side. He must have decided that playing the game was more fun than running because he waited for her. She plopped the slime onto his head. His mouth dropped open and he let out a surprised grunt. I can't believe you did that. He reached for her. She tried to run away from him, but he grabbed her. Oh, no, you don't. She wiggled, but he had too strong of a hold on her. Let me go. Not until I get you back. She squinted up at him, waiting for him to slime her again. Her heart beat a thousand times a second, and she could barely catch her breath. He suddenly sobered and looked at her. You're beautiful. With slime on my face. He chuckled. Yes. Well, now I know it's true love. She hadn't meant to say it, and she sucked in a tiny breath. The word love was now hanging in the air between them, like an unwanted guest. He leaned in closer to her. It might be, he whispered. He brushed his lips across hers and she closed her eyes getting lost in the electricity skittering over her skin. This kiss was slower than their kisses in the woods, as if Eli had nothing better to do. His warm lips caressed hers. She got caught up in the moment and threaded her fingers through his goopy hair. He moaned and kissed down her neck. 
She swallowed, emotion swelling in her. She had only known him a short time, but everything was multiplied with him. She'd liked Jack, but with Eli, it was different, stronger. She might even dare to think she loved him. Was she ready to admit that to herself? Could it be possible that she had fallen in love with Eli in just a few days? She was stunned by the possibility, and yet, as he held her and kissed her neck, she couldn't imagine being with anyone else. Eli was exciting. He was flirty and attentive, kind and caring. He wanted to know everything there was to know about her. Jack had never asked her what political party she belonged to or what her favorite movie was. He hadn't cared. Eli was so different. I think it is, she whispered. He pulled back. It is what? She held her breath for a moment, looking into his brown eyes. Was she ready to expose her feelings like that? She swallowed, not knowing if she should walk out on that ledge. What if he didn't return her feelings? She could break under that kind of rejection. But the way Eli was looking at her, like his gaze was caressing her skin, told her he was not going to dash her heart to pieces. But she couldn't speak the word. He smiled at her in that playful way he always did. He opened his mouth to speak, but the sound of the garage door opening startled her, and she jumped back from Eli. My parents are home. He wiped a piece of slime off her cheek. Oops. Come on, let's go to my bathroom and clean up. I don't want them to meet you like this. She grabbed his hand and tugged him up the stairs to the hallway bathroom. She pulled out a washcloth and turned on the faucet. Sit down. His eyebrows shot up. On the toilet? Where else? Yes, on the toilet. I have to wash it out of your hair. She cleaned him up, then wiped her face. Her sweater would need dry cleaning. She left him in the bathroom while she went into her bedroom to change. When she came out, he was standing in the hallway. Dang, he cleaned up well. How could it be possible that he looked even more hot? Maybe it was his damp hair, slightly mussed, or the look he had on his face, like he was full of desire. He leaned down and kissed her briefly. Let's go finish the pumpkins. She nodded. Okay. They passed by her father in the hallway on the way to the kitchen. Hey, Dad, this is Eli. This is my father, Frank. Her father stuck out his hand. Eli, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, sir. Are you the ones making a mess in the kitchen? Your mother wasn't too happy about it being left there. Sorry, we're in the middle of pumpkin carving. We'll clean up when we're done, I promise. Destiny smiled at him. Okay. His expression said, where's Jack? But thankfully, he didn't say anything. Destiny tugged Eli back into the kitchen. They spent the next hour carving the pumpkins and roasting the seeds. Eli showed her how to season the pumpkin seeds and put them in the oven. He was right. They were delicious. They placed the jack-o'-lanterns on the front porch. Eli rubbed his hands together. Let's step back and look at them. Destiny joined him, walking backwards until they hit the gate. She put her hand up to her chin. Oh, no, Eli said, shaking his head. This isn't good. What? Destiny couldn't see anything wrong. They'd place them on either side of the stoop. She thought they looked good. Oh, this won't do. I can't believe I did that. What did you do? He sighed. My pumpkin looks like Sean Mendez. Destiny laughed. No, it doesn't. 
Oh, yes. Look. He's got the same features. That same smile. And now every time you look at my jack-o'-lantern, you're going to wonder why you're going out with me instead of Sean. Destiny slapped his shoulder. Stop it! You're handsome. What, are you jealous of a pop star now? Yes. He grabbed her hand. Because you'd rather spend time with him. All right, all right. Can I amend my answer? Yes, you may. If I could spend the day with any famous person, I'd turn them down and spend it with you instead because you're the super jealous type who can't stand the thought of me with Sean Mendes. Eli chuckled and grabbed her, pulling her to him. You are so in trouble. Am I? Yes. Now I have to kiss all thoughts of Sean Mendez out of your head. And he did. Chapter 13 Destiny stood by the toaster, waiting for it to pop up. She'd had lovely dreams of Eli last night. She couldn't wait to see him again which was a bummer because he was spending the morning applying for jobs. She was already bored to tears. Maybe she'd go to the mall. Fluffy rubbed against Destiny's legs, and she reached down and scratched behind her ears. Olivia sat at the kitchen table, eating a yogurt. She hadn't yet had a conversation about school with their parents, and Destiny could feel the tension mounting. Her father walked into the room, his robe and slippers on. He grabbed a cup of coffee. The toast popped up and Destiny pulled it out of the toaster. She buttered the first piece, watching it melt on contact. She loved toast, if it was still hot. Once it got cold, she couldn't stand to eat it. Her sister scraped the bottom of her yogurt cup with her spoon. Destiny glanced over at her when the noise didn't stop. Olivia was on the edge of her seat, her shoulders tense, scraping the bottom of that cup like she was digging for gold. Her mother came into the room. She was dressed like she was going to go out with friends for lunch. Olivia continued. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Olivia! Destiny said. Her sister stopped and looked at her. Just tell them. Olivia's eyes grew wide, and she looked like she was going to throw her empty yogurt cup at Destiny. Tell us what, her mother said. Olivia blanched and then set down her yogurt cup. She cleared her throat. I have something important to say, and even though I was going to wait... She shot daggers at Destiny, and Destiny just shrugged. It's something I have to do. Her father set down his coffee mug on the table and took a seat. What is it? Olivia took in a deep breath. I quit school. You what? Her father stood up, his chair flying backwards. Her mother clutched at her neck. You quit school? Why? Olivia flinched. I started up my own business. Her father's mouth dropped open, but no words came out. Her mother just stood there, staring at Olivia. Destiny took another bite of her toast. You can't quit school, her father finally said. What kind of business? Where is it? What will you be doing? I'm a personal shopper. Olivia straightened her back and rushed ahead. And I know you don't think that's a real business, but I have people paying me to do this for them. I even have a client from Alaska. Her mother seemed to have something caught in her throat. Her father looked like he'd swallowed a tomato, then assumed the same color. You will not quit school, young lady, and that's final. He righted his chair and sat in it. You will go back to school on Monday. I hate accounting, Dad. I can't go back to it. It's sucking the life out of me. Olivia dramatically flopped onto the table, 
her cheek pressing against the wood. It's a very sensible degree. I hate sensible, Olivia muttered. Sensible has given us a stable income, her father said, raising his voice. Sensible gave us a place to live and food to eat. I can have all those things with my own business, too. Olivia sat up. If I give you my business plan, would you at least look at it? You have a business plan? Her father's eyebrows raised so high, he almost had no forehead left. Yes, and I have a website and one investor. Destiny was impressed. Her sister hadn't mentioned all this to her. An investor? Her father sat back in his chair. Well, I could look at your business plan. Thank you. But I feel like you should continue to go to school while you... I know, Daddy, but I have a lot of things scheduled over the next three months. I'm leaving on Wednesday to go to a wholesale clothing show in Chicago. More news to Destiny. Maybe she should have talked with Olivia some more. Her father rubbed his temples. Let me see your business plan. We'll go from there. Olivia jumped up from her chair and kissed her father on the cheek. Thank you, Daddy. Since the show was over, Destiny pulled out her phone and texted Jessica as her family dissipated from the kitchen. I need to buy a warmer jacket. You free today? An answer came back quickly. Sorry, Christian and I are going to the lake today. Darn. But that made sense. Jessica and Christian were pretty much glued together since they started dating. She sent a frowny face emoji, then told her to have fun. She pressed on Amanda's name next. Amanda wasn't big on shopping, but she would go to the mall with her if Destiny asked. Unfortunately, Amanda was busy today, too. Destiny set her phone down and ate the last of her toast. She'd just have to shop by herself today. She grabbed her car keys and headed toward the garage. I'm going to the mall, she called out. Have fun, her mom called back from the living room. I will. Destiny pulled on her warm fall boots and denim jacket before she left the house. Her coat from last year was too small. She'd seen some adorable, fuzzy, cropped coats at the mall last week. As she drove by the school, she saw the same tiny kitten she'd seen a few weeks ago walking across the grass. She pulled her car into the parking lot and cut the engine. She climbed out and hurried to see if the kitten was still there. It was nowhere to be seen. She looked into the bushes but couldn't find the small animal. Since this was the second time she'd seen it on the school property, she figured its mother lived somewhere nearby. But as she scanned the houses, she saw no sign of any other cats. There wasn't anything left to do but continue to the mall. It didn't take her long, and soon she was walking through the well-lit strip. She crossed the mall to her favorite clothing store and entered. She headed straight for the cropped coats. As she flipped through them on the rack, she heard laughing behind her. Nikki and the other pop girls entered the store. Destiny froze. The last time she'd spoken to them, she'd made a fool of herself. Her first instinct was to cower and hide. But Nikki saw her, and they walked toward her. Hey, guys, she said when they approached her. The girls stared. Nikki looked her over before smiling. Hey, Destiny. Nikki knew her name? Destiny couldn't believe it. She acted cool. Shopping for something in particular? Charlie snorted and Nikki gave her an evil look. Then Nikki turned back to her. Yep, we're shopping. That wasn't what Destiny had asked, but she shrugged it off. These jackets are on sale. I think I'm going to buy one. Nice. Nikki picked one up off the rack. And it even has little pockets. See? Destiny showed her. Very cute, Kara said. 
She tugged at the security tag on the bottom of the jacket. But not really practical. Nikki shook her head. You're right, not practical. She walked over to the bracelets and the other pop girls followed her. Nikki motioned for Destiny to follow. It was like a dream come true. Destiny was being included in the group of pop girls. She hurried to catch up with them. Kara picked up a bracelet and slid it on her wrist. Does this go with my complexion? I think it looks nice, Destiny said. Nikki squinted at it. Yep, looks good. Destiny kind of felt like one of them as they looked through all the jewelry, commenting on the styles. She picked up one with turquoise stones. This one is cool. Love it, Nikki said. Turquoise is so in right now. Destiny could have floated out of there. Yes, and it would go with your shirt. Nikki grew serious and set down the bracelet. Okay, I'm going to give it to you straight. You're cool, Destiny. And I think you could help us. Destiny tried not to hyperventilate. Nikki called her cool. That was freaking awesome! Sure, I'd be happy to, she said, trying to keep her voice light. Are you one of us? Nikki said, her voice low. They wanted her to be one of the pop girls. Destiny thought she was going to faint. Yes. Would you swear yourself to secrecy, even if it meant going to jail? Nikki looked at her like this was the most important question of all. Kara and Charlie huddled in closer. I swear, Destiny whispered. She'd do anything to be in with the pop girls. Nikki looked around the shop, then leaned in closer to the group. Here's the plan. I'll go distract that harpy behind the counter. The rest of you will snag the bracelets. She looked at Destiny, her gaze piercing. You in? Chapter 14 Destiny's throat closed up, and she was having a hard time breathing. Nikki wanted her to steal? That was what the pop girls did for fun? A thousand thoughts ran through her mind at once. She was an honest person. She'd never stolen anything in her life. She always drove the speed limit. She never even stayed out past her curfew. It wasn't in her nature to steal. But the pop girls were who she belonged with. She was born to be popular. She wanted the fashion, loved the too-cool-for-school vibe they had. She loved the way everyone wanted to be them. A vision flashed through her mind, and she saw herself at school. She walked with a swagger, sat at their table, and laughed with them. She was looked up to by every freshman girl. She was crowned prom queen. She could have it all, if only she would do this. But the vision turned dark, and she saw herself with them stealing on the weekends, getting caught, getting arrested, going to jail. She would be in so much trouble. Guilt overpowered her, and she knew. There was no way she could help the pop girls steal. Nikki stared at her, her long eyelashes thick with mascara. Are you in, or are you out? She emphasized the words, and Destiny knew what she meant. She would be in the group if she did this. But if she refused, she'd be out of popularity, out of the inner circle, and probably out of every group at school. Destiny swallowed. She wanted to be in. She wanted it so bad she could taste it. 
but she couldn't do what Nikki wanted her to. Destiny licked her lips. I'm going to pick out a jacket. You do what you want. As she left them, she heard one of them snort. Probably Kara, but she didn't look back to see. Her skin felt like it was on fire. She could feel them staring at her. She picked up a white fuzzy jacket and checked the size. It would fit. Her nerves grew as she walked to the counter. She slid the coat onto the glass. The woman behind the counter gave her a bored look. Is this it? Yes. The woman bent down to get a sack from behind the counter. She heard movement behind her and a realization hit her. She was probably doing exactly what the pop girls wanted. She was distracting the woman behind the counter so they could take the bracelets. They might even think she volunteered to be the one to distract her. For a split second, Destiny debated what to do. She could do nothing and just let the girls get away with it. They might take her in as one of them. But her gut clenched, and she couldn't do it. When the woman stood back up, Destiny leaned close. Those girls are stealing bracelets, she whispered. The woman pointed. Those girls? Destiny looked. Nikki, Kara, and Charlie were speed walking toward the exit. She nodded. Yes. The woman waited until they left the store. Then she picked up the phone and pressed a couple of buttons. She talked for a moment, then hung up. Security will stop them. Thanks for reporting it. We lose quite a bit of money from people who shoplift. We need more teenagers like you. Destiny smiled but didn't feel it. Inside, she felt sick to her stomach. She just got the pop girls into trouble. They probably would hate her forever now. Who knew what they would do to her? She left the store with her shopping bag, feeling worse than ever before. As she walked, she saw them. A security guard was standing in front of the pop girls, his arms folded. Nikki looked like she was going to murder someone. And then her gaze met Destiny's. You're dead, she mouthed. Heat rose up to Destiny's neck, and she picked up her pace. She told herself to ignore the pop girls, but she couldn't. She knew she'd just committed social suicide. Her face flamed as she walked outside and rushed to get into her car. Her hands shook as she turned the key in the ignition. How could she have done that? All she had to do was keep quiet. She wasn't stealing. She was just buying a jacket. No one would have known. The pop girls would have loved her. The store would have absorbed the cost. It would have worked out. But no. She had to tattle on them. Destiny felt like she was going to throw up. She drove home and took her jacket up to her room, leaving it in the bag. She shoved it in the bottom of her closet. She didn't want to look at it. She probably would never wear it now that it was tainted with this memory. She took off her boots and sat in her beanbag chair. She opened up her Snapchat account and saw 15 messages. Oh no, this was not good. She opened the first one from a username she didn't recognize. How could you? You are scum. It went on, but she didn't read the rest. She opened the next one and then the next. They were all variations of the first, some getting vulgar, some threatening. She stopped opening them. Her chest felt hollow as she deleted the messages. She closed Snapchat and texted Eli, tears blurring her vision. Where are you? I need you. It didn't take long for him to get back to her. What's going on? 
I'm downtown at Grind It Up. Fluffy came back to her and she scooped her cat into her lap. She needed the comfort. She texted Eli back. I did something bad. Really bad. She couldn't stop her fingers from trembling. What happened? I committed social suicide. Destiny felt like throwing up. She texted the rest of the story to him. You did the right thing. But now they hate me, and they are telling everyone, and I'm getting hate mail now. Hold on. I'm coming over. Destiny couldn't stop shaking. Her phone alerted her to another message on Snapchat. She turned off the sound and shoved it into her pocket. But the phone vibrated each time another message came in. This was so bad. The whole school would know by tomorrow. She would be hated. She sat there, numb, for 12 minutes until she heard the doorbell ring. She set Fluffy on the floor, jumped up from her chair, and raced down to open the door, even though she was pretty sure she was the only one home. When she saw Eli, she let out a sob and rushed into his arms. He held her tight. It felt good to have his arms around her, like he was holding her together, and without him, she would shatter into a million pieces. Hey, calm down. It's okay. It will be all right. No, it won't, she whispered. Everyone hates me. That's not true. Come on, let's go inside. He led her to the living room, gently guiding her to sit on the couch. He kept his arm around her. Not everyone hates you. She nodded. Yes, listen to them come in. She pulled her phone out of her pocket and turned on the ringer. The notifications came, one after another. Eli frowned. Let me see them. Destiny swallowed down another wave of nausea. She opened Snapchat and gave him the phone. He sat for a moment, reading the messages, his face getting red. I think you should uninstall this app. Maybe even disable your account. Disable her Snapchat? But that was how she talked to most of her friends. She didn't want to, but as the hate notifications kept coming in, she nodded. All right, you do it. I don't want to see it anymore. She turned away while he fiddled with her phone. A moment later, he placed it on her lap. Done. She closed her eyes and rested her head on the back of the couch. I'm never going to recover from this. Yes, you are. Those girls might be popular, but they don't own the whole school. But they do! Destiny blinked back more tears. Nikki was queen of them all. She decided what or who was popular. What was in and what was out. And now, Destiny was out. Not only that, she was blackballed. Hated. Even the nerds, did they follow after those girls? No. The band geeks? Destiny made a face. I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work. Eli blew out a frustrated breath. What, that I'm trying to show you that not everyone falls down to worship those girls? That the whole school isn't on a quest to make you miserable? Did you see all those messages? Yeah, and most of them were brand new usernames. Think about it. Get a group of ten kids together and you can send a zillion messages out just by wasting your time. Was that true? Destiny ran a hand over her hair. Maybe you're right. They don't have power over everyone at school. Just all the popular people. Think about it, Eli said, pressing closer to her. That's not that many people. The cheerleaders and jocks and maybe a few rich kids. That's all. 
Destiny took in a breath and let it out slowly. He was right. The whole school didn't hate her. She squeezed Eli's hand. Yeah, you're right. A text message came through on her phone. She looked at it. Too cowardly to keep your Snapchat account? She froze as a cold fear snaked through her. It was from an unknown number. She tried to hide it from Eli, but he grabbed her phone and read it. I suggest you block any numbers that text you today. Another one came in. Do you think you'll get away from this? If I were you, I wouldn't go to school tomorrow. She covered her face with her hands. It's never going to stop. Come on now, it's just the pop girls and their followers giving you a bad time. You stood up to them and they didn't like that. Really? That's good that you can deduce that because I wasn't sure at all what was going on. Destiny felt bad for being snarky. She sucked in a breath. Sorry, that was mean. You're just on edge. We need to get your mind off this. Let's go do something. Are you done putting in job applications? For now. He smiled at her. This is more important. All right. She leaned over and gave him a quick kiss. What should we do? Something cheap? I'm out of money. He chuckled and she laughed. All right, but let me go fix my makeup. I'm sure I look like a mess. Eli shook his head. Nope. You look like a goddess. That made her smile. He was such a good guy. How had she gotten so lucky? You're the best, she said, as she leaned over to kiss him again. Her phone indicated another text had come through. She turned it off without looking. Chapter 15 Eli spent the rest of the afternoon trying to cheer up Destiny. Every time a text would come through on her phone, she would shove it at him. He was glad she wasn't reading them anymore. They were getting worse the more she ignored them. He would block the numbers, but new numbers kept getting through. He was starting to worry that Destiny's original assessment was more accurate. There seemed to be a lot of kids who hated her. He took Destiny to the park. They walked the gardens, looked at the sculptures and fountains, and stopped to get an ice cream cone as the sun went down. On the way back to her house, she shrieked and grabbed his arm. Stop the car! He slammed on his brakes, his heart pounding. What? Destiny jumped out of his car. There it is! He leaned down to watch her race up the grass towards the high school. What in the world was she doing? He couldn't quite see. But as she walked back to him, she held a black and white kitten in her arms. The scrawny thing looked so tiny. Destiny climbed back in the car. I think its mother got killed. I don't know if... Destiny held the kitten up and looked under the tail. She can eat food on her own yet. What are you going to do? Let's take her to my house. We can search the internet to figure out what to feed her. The little thing meowed. Eli drove to Destiny's house and pulled into the driveway. The poor thing. It looks cold. I know. I saw it twice before, but it was too fast. It got away from me. He followed her into her house. Destiny pulled a blanket from the closet and wrapped it around the kitten. Then she took it into the living room and grabbed a remote control from the mantle. Will you Google what to feed a kitten while I try to warm her? The fireplace came to life, and Destiny curled up in front of it. Eli joined her. Sure. After a moment, the kitten wiggled out of Destiny's blanket cocoon and jumped onto the hearth. She stared at the flames, then tried to bat at them on the screen. No, sweetie, Destiny said. 
pulling the kitten back. Eli opened a browser and searched for what to feed the tiny thing. How old do you think it is? I don't know. It can eat on its own if it's six weeks old. How can you tell the age? Destiny set the blanket down because it was squirming to get away again. The kitten jumped on the corner of the blanket like it had caught a mouse. Destiny tugged on the blanket and they played a game of chase the blanket corner. I'll search. Eli went back to his phone and looked for the answer. Here's a chart. He looked at the images and descriptions of the different stages. Oh, this one has got to be old enough to eat cat food. Look at this picture. He showed it to Destiny. Yeah, she looks like that. Okay, she should be able to eat cat food then. The kitten pounced on her foot, and she giggled. I'll get some from the cupboard. He watched as she stood and walked into the kitchen. This was the perfect distraction that she needed. He was glad she'd seen the scrawny thing in the bushes. He heard her open the can. Then a white cat came racing down the stairs and through the room to the kitchen. The kitten watched the cat with curiosity. Fluffy, this isn't for you, Destiny said. She came back in the room with a bowl of cat food in one hand and Fluffy held like a football in the other. When Fluffy saw the kitten, her ears flattened and she hissed. Stop that, Destiny said, setting down the bowl of food. The kitten came and attacked it like it hadn't eaten in days. Oh, look, she's starving. Fluffy hissed again and wiggled out of Destiny's arms. She ran from the room. The kitten ignored her, eating the wet cat food. Destiny's phone made another sound. She just shoved it at Eli. Delete and block. I will. He looked at the message. It was from Jessica. What's going on? I got a message from someone saying you stabbed Nikki in the back and stole her boyfriend. Is this true? Eli's chest tightened. This wasn't good. If rumors are starting to spread to the senior band geeks, it was possible the whole school would be talking about her by tomorrow. You'd better answer this one. It's from your cousin. Destiny grabbed her phone back. Her face drained of color and she stared before typing furiously on her phone. They're spreading lies about me. I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. She moaned and rocked back and forth. Hey, calm down. Eli put his hand on her arm. We'll straighten it out. Don't worry. How? Everyone is going to think the worst things about me. I'll think of something. Eli pulled her to him, and she snuggled into his chest. Don't think about it right now. That's easy for you to say. You're not the one everyone is going to hate tomorrow. Eli just held her and stroked her back. She might be right. With the rumors spreading that quickly, she might have a hard time at school tomorrow. Have you thought about staying home tomorrow? I can't. I have tests I have to take. Then ignore everyone else. I'll be there. You can stick with me. I'll make sure nothing bad happens. A dark feeling spread through Eli's gut. He hoped he knew what to do. Something told him he might not be able to follow through with his promise. Chapter 16 Destiny's parents weren't too terribly happy about the kitten, but they let her keep it in her room for the time being. She'd work on them. They usually gave in to her if she persisted. Monday morning came too early, and Destiny texted Eli before she got ready for school. I'm nervous. His text came back almost immediately. Don't be. I looked into the Rockford High anti-bullying policy. They can't do anything to you at school. She rolled her eyes. Great. Should I print it up to hand out then? Maybe get it laminated? You think that will help? 
Ha ha, I'm serious. We'll tell Principal Brown if anyone messes with you. Right. Maybe Eli had never seen anyone get blackballed at school before. He sure wasn't acting like he knew what would happen. But she didn't want to argue with him. It would be pointless. All right, see you in an hour. Even though she dragged her feet as she got ready for school, she left her house on time. She parked in the school lot, but spied Eli standing outside the doors before she got out of her car. Dang, he looked good in his jeans. Had he done something different with his hair? Whatever he'd done, it was really working for him. She climbed out of her car, and he started toward her. Hey. She joined him. Hi. He shoved his hands in his pockets. Amanda and Cole are at your locker. We might want to take a minute to get there. Her heart sank. What did they do to my locker? Just your normal stuff. Wrote all over it with red marker. Called you names. They're cleaning it off. He didn't look her in the eye. She wondered what else there was on her locker that he wasn't telling her. She decided to let it slide. Well, that's original. He chuckled. Yeah. He put his arm around her. You okay? She nodded, even though she didn't feel okay. She felt a little like throwing up. Let's go in. It's cold out here. He walked with her. He looked like he was shielding her. She liked how protective of her he was being. It was endearing. Eli opened the door for her. Another thing she liked about him. He was old-fashioned that way. The second she was in the building, it was obvious everyone had heard the rumors about her. People stared at her. Others gave her nasty glares. One girl turned around like she couldn't stand to look at her. Destiny tried not to let it bother her, but it hurt. These were people who had said hello to her just last week. People she sat with in class. People who normally liked her. So, Amanda wants me to join in some protest thing she's organizing for next week. Know anything about it? Yeah, it's that old opera house they want to tear down. Destiny tried to ignore the glares. She wants to go stand in front of the bulldozers. When is it coming down? I'm not sure. Next Friday, maybe? Destiny had promised Amanda she'd be there against the death of her firstborn child, so she'd probably better ask. So, does she and Cole have a thing going on? Destiny stopped short and stared up at Eli. What? Why do you ask? Did you see something? Because I've always thought she had a crush on Cole, but she denies it venomously. I see the way she looks at him, and I totally think she's got the hots for him. It's just the way they argue, like they both want to slap each other, then make out, you know? Ha! Huh. Destiny shoved his chest. So it's not just me. Eli grinned at her. Nope. Good. I feel validated. Destiny turned the corner and her blood froze. Amanda and Cole were scrubbing her locker, but it was obvious the word whore had been written on it. Several other words, too, apparently. But those were scrubbed enough she couldn't make them out. Amanda turned and made eye contact with her. A flash of pity crossed her face. Sorry, she said when Destiny got close enough. We tried. It was permanent marker. Eli told us what happened. Sorry, man. Cole said hunching over. He looked like he was suddenly interested in his shoes. That was so rotten, what they did to you. I told you they were brain dead. You should have stayed away. Destiny nodded. You are totally right. She opened her locker and got her books. It doesn't matter. I no longer care about being popular. I just want to make it through today without having dog food dumped on me. Eli straightened his back. 
I won't allow that. She patted his arm, suddenly emotional for some reason. Thanks, Eli. The bell rang and Destiny took in a deep breath. Well, this is it. I have to go to class. Amanda's expression softened. No one will do anything to you in class. The teachers are there. Right. Had they actually never seen any teen movies out there? She plastered on a smile. See you at lunch. Destiny left her friends standing around her locker. She could do this. All she had to do was ignore the sneers, the jabs, and the mean things people whispered in the hallways. She imagined an armor of steel protecting her. She would not talk to anyone, not look at anyone. She entered her first class. Biology. It wasn't a hard class, and her teacher was funny. She usually liked the class. As she walked past the row of students, one girl stuck out her foot, and Destiny tripped. Her chin hit the floor, jarring her teeth, and her papers flew down the aisle. She slowly pulled herself up. Tears threatened to fall down her cheeks. She gathered up her papers and sat in her chair. No one looked at her. No one helped her. Everyone pretended she wasn't there. Destiny steeled herself. She was made of stone. No one could harm her. She spent the class forcing herself not to care about what everyone else thought of her. She had Eli, Amanda, and Cole. They were on her side. And that's all she needed. Chapter 17 Destiny walked to the cafeteria. At least no one tripped her in her other morning classes. She just had to get through the next 30 minutes without anyone dumping chocolate milk or spaghetti on her head. Eli met her as soon as she walked through the doors. I got your lunch for you so you don't have to stand in line. He walked her to their table. Amanda and Cole were already seated. What happened? Amanda asked, looking up at her. You've got a mark on your chin. Destiny sank into her chair and shook her head. Someone tripped me. I fell and hit my chin. Eli hunched over and gently lifted her chin so he could see. His jaw clenched. Who did that? I talked to Mr. B and he said if anyone bullies you to tell him about it. Destiny's face heated. You talked to Mr. B? How humiliating. Yes, I told you they have an anti-bullying policy here. I can't run and hide behind Mr. B. That's just going to make things worse. Destiny slowly pulled away from him. I know you're trying to help, and I think you're sweet, but I will handle things myself. Cole punched the palm of his hand. If anyone tries to mess with you, I'll handle things my way. Destiny smiled at him. He was formidable, but she didn't want him getting in any fights over her. It's okay, Cole, I'm fine. Cole shrugged. I'm here if you need me. Eli sat beside her and put his arm around her. If anyone is going to protect Destiny, it's going to be me. How's the pizza today? Destiny picked up her piece, even though she wasn't hungry. Greasy, Cole said. Amanda whacked his arm. No, it's not. It's good today. You'll like it. Everyone was acting weird. Destiny took a bite of her pizza and set it back down on her plate. She grabbed a napkin and wiped her lips. Who are you asking to the Halloween dance, Cole? His gaze flickered around the table. Aren't we going as a group? What, the four of us? Destiny motioned between them. Me and Eli and you and... Amanda slapped the table. Why does society want to put everyone in a box? Don't you think we can have fun together without pairing up? 
Why bow down to the social pressures? She looked like she was trying to convince herself more than anyone. Cole shrugged. I don't mind going to the dance with you. He looked at Amanda. In fact, everyone looked at Amanda. Her cheeks turned red. Uh. Why not? Cole picked up his milk carton. Will you go with me? Amanda blinked a couple of times. Then she played it off cool and shrugged like Cole had done. Sure, I guess if we have to officially say it. Great. Cole took a long drink of his milk. Then he crumpled the carton in his massive paw and tossed it onto his tray. What are you going to dress up as? I have this great costume planned. I bought a fishing net, and I'm going to glue trash all over it. She beamed like this was the coolest idea she'd ever had. Cole made a face. So you're going as a pile of trash that washed up in a fishing net? Amanda glared at him. No, I'm helping bring awareness to the state of our oceans and lakes. By going to the dance as a pile of trash, Cole said, but his lips twitched up as he said it. Gah! Amanda threw her arms up in the air. I suppose you want me to go as a cheerleader or something stupid like that. Cole grinned. Then I could go as a football player. We'd match. Amanda rolled her eyes. No way, meathead. Destiny knew she had to salvage the conversation or they'd bicker like that for the rest of the time. How many more spiders do we need to make? And how early are we getting to the gym on Thursday night? Last I checked, we need about 20 more spiders, Eli said. We'd better meet after school to work on them more. The conversation shifted to dance preparations while Destiny ate the rest of her pizza. It had started to taste better. When the bell rang, Eli leaned over and pressed a feather-light kiss to her lips. I'll see you after school, he whispered. Her stomach filled with energized butterflies. He knew how to make her feel special. See you, she said. The rest of her afternoon classes dragged by, but nothing eventful happened, other than people ignoring her. She was fine with that. She'd rather have everyone ignore her than come out with outright hostility. After school, she grabbed her books and headed down the hall to put them in her locker. As she approached, she saw Eli standing there. He hadn't noticed her yet, and she slowed her steps so she could take him in. He seemed to be guarding her locker or something. His shoulders were tense, and his hair looked like he'd been running his hand through it. It was sweet of him, and she felt her heart swell. Jack came around the corner and walked up to Eli. He clapped him on the shoulder. Here's your hundred bucks. He shoved a handful of bills at him. Thanks for helping me with my girlfriend problem. Jack's words sent a jolt of shock through her. She stepped out of the throng of people, her back up against some random locker. A football player hid her from view. She peeked around him. Eli put the money in his pocket. He looked uncomfortable. Jack put his thumbs in his pockets. Next time I have a girl I want to get rid of, I'm calling you, buddy. He laughed like he'd said the funniest thing in the world, then walked off. Destiny tried to wrap her head around what had just happened. Jack was paying Eli? For what? To flirt with her and make her break up with him? She couldn't believe it was true. She stepped out from behind the football player and approached Eli. What was that all about? Eli jumped and spun around. What? He looked panicked. Destiny's throat grew tight. Why did Jack pay you? Eli stared at her like she wasn't speaking English. He didn't say anything, which told her a lot. 
heat rushed up her neck. Did Jack pay you to flirt with me? She said, her voice almost a whisper. The look on Eli's face revealed it all. Des, it wasn't like that. Then what was it like? Her voice rose. Were you coming on to me this whole time because of Jack? Is that why you were so into me back before we knew each other? No, I mean, maybe it started out that way, but it didn't, I couldn't. Eli stammered for a second, then just closed his mouth. Her stomach clenched. She thought the worst thing in the world had happened to her, with the pop girls spreading rumors and hate toward her. But she was wrong. This was much worse. She backed away from him. How could Eli have taken money to pretend to like her? Had Jack hired him so he wouldn't have to break up with her, like some twisted service where you pay to have someone else break you up? She felt like throwing up. She could feel the tears about to flow, and the last thing she wanted to do was cry in front of him. Eli didn't deserve to have that kind of power over her. She gritted her teeth, trying to stop them from coming. Don't ever talk to me again. She turned from him and fled down the hallway. Chapter 18 Eli reached out to stop Destiny, but it was too late. She had already disappeared into the mass of students rushing to get out of the building. He stood there, his heart thumping loudly in his ears. Destiny heard the whole thing. How could he have let that happen? He swallowed. This was bad. Destiny hated him. He should have shoved Jack away, told him not to talk about it in the hall. He should have known Destiny was coming and that she could overhear. Jack was such a jerk. No, this whole thing was his fault. He should have told Jack off from the beginning. Maybe even told Destiny about it. Been on the level with her. She would have seen through Jack. They would have ended up together, and there was no reason for her to hate him now. He pulled out his phone. He had to fix this. He pressed on Destiny's name and sent her a text. Please listen, it's not what you think. It took a moment for her to answer. I think Jack paid you to flirt with me. Is that not right? Crap. It was what she thought. How could he make this better? He ran a hand through his hair and tried again. It started out that way, but it quickly turned into something more. He waited for her to answer, but no more texts came through. He leaned against her locker. Call me. I really need to talk to you to explain. This time the answer came fast. No, I don't want to talk to you. Stop texting me or I'll block your number. I've gotten a lot of practice at that lately. Eli blew out an exasperated breath. He couldn't give up. Not with things so bad. He had to make it right, but she obviously needed time to cool down. He pocketed his phone, moaned, and turned toward the library. This was just great. Now he had to go tell Cole and Amanda why Destiny wasn't staying after school to make spiders with them. He'd rather swallow razors. Eli walked into the library and went into the back room. No one was there yet, and he grabbed the tub of craft supplies that was in the corner. Maybe Cole and Amanda wouldn't show up. Maybe he could quietly make spiders and no one would bother him. No such luck. Amanda and Cole walked in, laughing about something. She touched Cole's arm, and it looked a bit more intimate than just friends. Eli held back a grin. He and Destiny had so pegged it. They'd be a couple by the end of the dance. He was sure of it. They sat at the table, picking up supplies. 
Where's Destiny? Amanda asked. Eli braced himself. She's not coming. Why not? Cole's eyebrows pulled down. What's wrong? She's mad at me. What? Amanda's mouth dropped. How could she be mad at you? What happened? Eli sighed, then launched into the long story of how Jack had approached him, how he'd liked Destiny from the start, and how he'd needed the money, so he finally said yes. As he talked, Amanda's lips pressed tighter together, and he knew she was going to give it to him when he was done. So that's how she found out about it, and I feel horrible, but she won't listen to me. Amanda scoffed. Of course she won't. You do realize what a jerk move that was, right? I mean, the whole thing is making me super angry. She's not a possession. She's a person, Eli. I know. He tossed a spider on the table. I didn't mean to be a jerk. I didn't mean for anything bad to happen. You played with her emotions, Amanda said, narrowing her eyes at him. You pretended to like her. How do you think that makes her feel? Did you not listen? Cole interrupted. He said he liked her the entire time. He said he had real feelings for her. Amanda glared at Cole. After he pretended to like her, that is so not cool. She turned back to Eli. What if you had gotten to know her and hadn't hit it off? What if she had been annoying and whiny? What then? He shook his head. You're right. Things could have gone very badly. I never should have agreed to be Jack's pawn. Cole picked at the glue. I think it's one of those cute stories about how people met that you'll laugh at someday. Cole! Amanda looked like she wanted to slap him. He lied to her, faked that he liked her. Can't you see how bad that was? He flirted, Cole shrugged. It wasn't like he scammed her. But he did scam her, don't you see? Eli held out his hand. Amanda is right. I shouldn't have done what I did. But now it's done. What I really need to know is, how do I make it better? Amanda pulled her long hair back into a ponytail and secured it with a band that she'd had around her wrist. She needs time to process what you did. Time to vent and get angry. You can't bug her right now. She'll just shut you out. Eli picked up a styrofoam ball. Amanda was totally correct. Destiny was too mad right now to deal with it. He had to give her some time. He had to let her cool down, even if it killed him not to run to her. You're right. I'll leave her alone. But I have to do something to show her I wasn't lying at the end, that I want to be with her, that I... Dare he say it? He swallowed. He had to. I love her. Amanda nearly dropped the glue. Seriously? Eli felt like the biggest schmuck. He nodded. Yeah. I love her. Then let's think. If you want her back, you're going to have to do something big. Then you don't hate me? Eli's hopes rose. Amanda shook her head and put her hand on his arm. You did a rotten thing, but your heart is in the right place now. I don't hate you. I still think it was a cute way to meet her, Cole muttered. Amanda ignored him. Let's brainstorm. We need to come up with something great you can do. Chapter 19 Destiny clung to her cousin and sobbed. She texted Jessica after she got home and her cousin had rushed over. Destiny squeezed her eyes shut. I can't believe I was such a fool. Jessica patted her back 
as the little black and white spotted kitten played with one of Fluffy's toys on the floor of her bedroom. How could you have known? He seemed like such a nice guy. I know, that's what's so confusing. He was acting this whole time. Who does that? I don't know, a creep? Destiny choked out another sob. Yeah, you're right. Jessica pulled back. You want to go to the mall? Retail therapy? Destiny made a face. No, the mall is ruined for me right now. Oh. Pink graced Jessica's cheeks. Sorry, I forgot about what happened at the mall. That was stupid of me. No, it's fine. Usually retail therapy is good. Tonight, I just want to sulk. The kitten came over to the bed and crouched low like it was going to try to jump on the bed. Destiny reached over and picked it up, in case it couldn't make it. Sulk while eating too much ice cream at the spotted cow? Jessica wiggled her eyebrows. A groan escaped Destiny's lips as she petted the kitten's fur. Not there! Wait, the mall is ruined and now the spotted cow too? Why? Did you and Jerkface go there? Destiny nodded, the memory invading her mind even though she'd tried to block it. That was the night I really fell for Eli. The night we talked and we almost kissed. And I realized I didn't want to be Jack's doormat anymore. That's the night you broke it off with Jack. Yeah. Stupid of her to be so emotional over a dumb place to get ice cream. She just couldn't bring herself to go in there right now. A thoughtful expression crossed Jessica's face. What night was that? Friday. And what has Eli been doing since Friday? Doing? She wasn't sure what Jessica was asking. I don't know. We went to the pumpkin patch. He came over when I was distraught yesterday. Is that what you mean? So you and he have been hanging out. Yeah. Jessica cocked her head to the side. And kissing? Destiny flushed, just thinking of Eli's kisses. Yeah. Are you sure he was pretending to like you this whole time? Why would he continue the charade after you broke up with Jack? Wasn't that the point? Destiny didn't want to think about what Eli's motives might have been. It made her sick to her stomach. The kitten squirmed in her arms and she let her down on the floor. I don't know. Well, did you ask him? Destiny scoffed. Ask him? I was so mad at him, I didn't want to stand there chatting. I just found out he lied to me. He pretended to like me, Jess. Jessica held out her hand. Give me your phone. Destiny backed away from her. What are you going to do? You said he texted you. I want to see them. A headache was starting to throb in the back of her skull. She didn't care anymore what Eli had said, but she tossed her phone at Jessica anyway. Jessica spent a few minutes messing with her phone. Look, he says it turned into something more. He likes you, Destiny. He didn't fake that part. Destiny stared at the phone where Jessica pointed. I think I'm too upset to even begin to let in the idea that he really feels something for me. Then let's go do something. Take your mind off this guy. We can go to Christian's favorite hangout, the side of the lake that no one goes to. We can watch the turtles until the sun sets. She made a face. Eli never took you there, did he? No. Then come on, you'll love it. Jessica stood and held out her hand. You need the mental break. Tomorrow, you can ponder over whether he actually fell for you or not. Destiny nodded and took her cousin's hand, standing up. All right, the turtle thing intrigues me. Jessica laughed. You'll love them. They're all over the place. It was a good idea to get her mind off Eli, off everything that happened at school. She could think about it tomorrow. Have I told you lately you're the best cousin I have?
Jessica smirked. Very nice compliment when I'm your only cousin. Hey, I can't help it if your parents weren't good at producing offspring. They were great at it. They stopped at perfection. Jessica laughed and Destiny joined in. Spending time with her cousin would be just the thing she needed. Destiny stared at the school building, dread pooling in her stomach. It was only Tuesday. How would she endure the rest of the week? At least Jessica had made her feel better last night, and she was ready to go inside and ignore Eli, the massive jerk. She tugged on her fuzzy crop jacket. She had pulled it out of the closet last night, deciding to own up to her choices rather than run from them. She'd done the right thing, no matter what anyone said. She was going to wear her new coat with pride. She ignored a group of girls who stared at her as she walked past them and entered the building. Eli wasn't in his usual spot, which shouldn't have surprised her, but for some reason her heart ached at his absence. As she walked to her locker, a girl she didn't know came up to her. She stiffened, expecting her to spit on her or something. But the girl just said, Good for you for standing up for what's right. Destiny blinked. Excuse me? The girl smiled at her. I read about how you wouldn't steal, and I think that's cool. Stealing just makes the stores have to raise their prices, and things are expensive enough. Then the girl left, and Destiny just stared after her. She read about what happened? The real story? Where did she read that? How strange. She continued to her locker. Amanda and Cole stood there. Before she could get her locker open, another girl came up to her. Hey, I just wanted to tell you that I've always thought you were super cool, and now I know I was right. The girl turned to walk away, and Destiny stopped her. Wait, what are you talking about? The girl turned, her long black hair swaying. You know, how you wouldn't let anyone force you to do something you didn't feel was right. How did you learn about that? It's all over social media. It is? Destiny couldn't believe it. Who had posted about that? Yeah, that new kid posted it. Said to come tell you if you supported standing up for what's right. She smiled. And I do. Before Destiny could say anything, a kid with a camera came up to her. Hey, Destiny, I'm Adam from the school paper, and I'd like to do a story about you, if you don't mind. Destiny's eyebrows shot up. A story? Yeah, about how you don't bow to social pressure and stuff. I think it would make a good, uplifting piece. All Destiny could think about was getting more public backlash from the pop girls and their crew. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't want any more hate emails. I just want to highlight what you did. How it took courage to stand up and do the right thing. Like that post that went out on social media. They didn't name any names, and we wouldn't either. Destiny needed time to process this. Can I think about it? Sure. Call me when you've decided. The kid handed her a piece of paper with his number on it. She shoved it into her back pocket. Okay. Amanda grinned at her, looking like she knew exactly what was going on. How's your day been so far? Weird. What did Eli do? She said as she opened her locker. Several pieces of paper spilled out of her locker onto the floor. Hate mail. She almost crumpled them up, but Amanda stopped her. Maybe you should read them first. Destiny opened the first one. Way to go for standing up for yourself. I wish more people would stand up to them. And I knew who they are, even if it didn't say. They've been ruining my life every day this year. The second was short and simple. I applaud you. The rest were similar. Destiny blinked back tears. 
I don't understand. Everyone hated me yesterday. No, Amanda said. It just felt that way. The cool kids have a following, but see all the kids they trample on to get to the most popular spot? You have more friends than you thought. Cole folded his arms, which made him look like a linebacker. And someone who cares deeply for you, whom you might want to think about talking to. He motioned with his chin, and Destiny turned around. Eli approached them, and somehow Amanda and Cole disappeared. Eli hunched his shoulders and shoved his hands in the pockets of his hoodie. Hey, he said tentatively. A wave of emotion swelled in destiny. Anger for what Eli had done, but it was coupled with humility, gratitude, and something else she couldn't quite pin down. He'd done something great for her last night. Something she couldn't have done herself. He'd somehow redeemed her. She swallowed and looked up at him, her heart racing. Hey. I need to apologize. I should have told you from the start what Jack was trying to do. I was stupid. She nodded, unable to say anything because her throat had swollen. I gave Jack his money back. It wasn't right to take it. I wanted to meet you from the moment I saw you in the cafeteria. You were so pretty, and when Jack asked me to flirt with you, it just seemed like a good excuse to get to know you. Really dumb, though, and I should have known it. Destiny wanted to believe him. She wanted to think that he had liked her from the start. But it was a hard thing to forgive. And then she remembered not too long ago how she was standing in Jessica's living room, pleading for her to forgive. She hadn't meant to steal Jack away from her cousin, and Jessica had accepted her apology. Maybe she could be more like Jessica. Destiny wiped at her cheek, not realizing she'd let a tear escape. Eli looked down at his shoes. Anyway... I understand if you don't want to forgive me. Destiny peered up at him and really took a good look. His eyes were bloodshot, like he hadn't slept well last night. He had bags under his eyes. He looked terrible. He also was tense, a muscle twitching near his eye. Destiny let out a breath. It hurt me when I found out about Jack paying you. Eli nodded. I know, it was a terrible thing. She reached up and placed a finger on his lips to stop him from talking. But I am so thankful for what you did for me last night. You helped me see that not everyone was against me. You gave me hope. Eli swallowed, a look of desperation in his eyes. He took her hand from his face and warmth washed over her. Des, it killed me to see you so distraught. I never want to see you so devastated again. I was more upset about what had happened between us, she confessed. I never want to fight like that again. Does that mean? It means I expect you to be the perfect boyfriend from now on. Eli smiled, relief flooding over his face. I can definitely do that. And I expect to be treated like a queen. Of course. And I get an unending supply of questions. Eli's grin widened, and he leaned in closer. How many do I get? You get one for every three that I ask. She tried to hide a smirk, but it landed on her lips anyway. So not fair, he said taking her in his arms. It should be even. You want it more than I do, she said, her voice low. I don't know. How bad do you want it? He wiggled his eyebrows. You're such a flirt. I resent that. I do more than flirt. He brought his lips down to hers and her world tilted. 
She'd never been one for public display of affection, but she suddenly didn't care as she returned the kiss. The school hallway melted away, and they were in their own world. He was hers, and he was exactly what she wanted. Epilogue Cole grinned and slapped Amanda's hand as they peeked around the corner, watching Eli and Destiny kiss. We did it! Amanda made a face at him. We? You mean I did it. I'm the one that came up with the idea for Eli to post the truth all over social media. But I'm the one who told him to make a plea for people to tell Destiny if they supported her decision. Amanda turned back to look at Destiny and Eli. All I know is I'm so happy she's with him now and Jack's out of here. He was so arrogant. Yeah, I never liked the guy. Amanda laughed and shook her head. Cole just grinned. He'd spent the last year trying to tell Amanda to lighten up on Jack. Boy, had he pegged him wrong. But he liked to make Amanda laugh. The sound made him feel like he was hooked up to an electrical current. So, about the dance. He let his question fade. He never was sure what was going to set Amanda off. She was spunky and funny, but she also had some strong opinions on things. He tried not to get in her way too much, but sometimes he just had to step in and tell her how it was. What about it? Do you want me to pick you up? Her eyebrows raised. I can't pick you up? Like, I can't get into a car and drive over to your house because I don't have man parts. Hey! I was just asking if you want me to be a gentleman and pick you up like we're on a real date. Sheesh, you don't have to get all weird about it. That was the perfect example. Why did everything have to be about feminine rights? Couldn't a guy just go out with a girl? Whatever. If it makes you feel manly to pick me up, then go ahead. Was that a hint of a smile on her face? He couldn't quite tell. She was always so frustrating, and yet there were a lot of cool things about her. Like yesterday, she was brilliant in coming up with their plan. He tried not to admit it, but he'd been crushing on her for a while now. She had passion. She cared about things. He liked that about her. And she smelled good. But he also knew, once she found out his father was the one behind the demolition of the old opera house building, she would hate his guts. Because no matter what, his father always got what he wanted. This has been Don't Trust the Imposter. Written by Victorine E. Liskey. Narrated by Liz Crane. Copyright 2019 by Victorine E. Liskey. Production copyright by Victorine E. Liskey.